Welcome to the NBA Roadshow, episode number 266. My name is John Morgan. Cold Coffee is with me here. Where else would we be? At the Casa de Cold Coffee. Mm. That's how we do it, chilling at home in Vegas. We still on lockdown. We still we still doing the quarantine life and uh, toasty out there, my man. 98 degrees today, man. It's, uh, I, you know, I, I, listen, I don't want to complain. I mean, we're all going through <laughs> the same thing, being in lockdown and all that stuff. Everybody's battling, but, you know. Normally, April, every 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 year, I, I tell people how wonderful it is. I say, if you're coming to Vegas, make sure you do it in April or October because those are the two best months of the year. Yeah. It's like 75 degrees every single day and uh, 98 degrees, man. It's, uh, it's, it's toasty out there. I'm not ready for this heat wave yet. <laughs> I just wanted to start singing a 98 degrees song, but I didn't. I realized I didn't know any of their songs, <laughs> so I, I was just gonna sing the word 98 degrees. But you're right, man. It is crazy. So I guess March would have been March, folks. Come out here in March, yeah. but do not come out in April because it can get scorching hot. Um, yeah, it's crazy. This whole week, it's gonna be in the 90s. Uh, I think we got to 100 the other day, even though yeah, somebody, they were saying it's like record record heat for April. It was like record heat for April. I, I, there's a guy I was. Uh, was doing a Red Cross shoot earlier, and he was like, no, we only got to 99. And I was like, bro, my car said it was 100, but sometimes your car thermometers are wrong. But uh, Is that not what the National Weather Service uses to get their yeah, data? They actually, your, your go out, they actually go out, and they, uh, they're like, they get in their cars, and they just double-check each other's cars. They're like, Joe, what's your car say? My car says 101. Okay, let's just average that shit out. You know, I'm the, I'm the son of a meteorologist, so you have to take my word on it. <laughs> That's how they. That's Dad how just they rolling do it. over his grave right now, <laughs> like, going, "Oh, that's not how they do yeah. it." What's well, funny story? Like uh, my dad, when he was a, so he was a meteorologist, but he did it. Uh, he was a weatherman all through the military, and uh, he was colorblind. And nowadays, like that would be one of those things where they would probably like just right off the bat say, oh, "Sorry, right. this probably isn't a field you can go into." Yeah, yeah. But back then, this was this was different. He went into the service uh, in. 50 something 60 or 50 like in the 50s or whatever right so uh i think it was a lot more lax but yeah, yeah, yeah. when he told me that after fact because i we used to always go to the weather station and i'd look at the stuff and all the shit's color coded i was gonna say so even what when did, you're looking so at, like, he's like dude i just i just been lying the whole time i don't know <laughs> i don't even know what they say bro he's like i can't when, believe they pay me man think, i'm just guessing <laughs> i think even when you can't see the exact colors you can see the density of a color and realize that okay because when you look at a chart, even if you see like something that says it's like an F five or an F whatever, you could see like I, the the density of what the the color would be, and they would just sort of compare it to what you were whatever. I used to think about that because I would look at like the weather radar as it would spin around and stuff would go, and I'd just be like, it was mono it was monotone at the time or right. monochrome whatever one color. So I could see where they'd be like, okay, you know, it's not a big deal. Nowadays, I'm sure the shit just spits it out and it says, this is a F5, this is a F4, or whatever. But in retrospect, just- I'm thinking maybe your dad might have used his car to, to get the temperature. Like, he's like, <laughs> good on you, son. Good on you, son. Believe me, cars didn't do it back then <laughs> at that point. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's, it's so funny. But yeah, the weather right now is absolutely bonkers. I like it for the fact that... Uh, you know, they say, especially with the virus, or is sitting on surfaces or anything. If anything's outside right now, that shit's gone. That's right. They say the heat, the heat helps kill that it. That shit's gone. Because the they said it like what seventy? I think it's. A, I don't know if it's just the heat or if it's a combination of the heat and the UV. That's good. It's got to be a whatever. Good thing. But like, yeah, as for stuff that's sitting outside here, it's got to be really, really. So good. the heat and the UV. Is there any way we? So could that's get the thing. I don't. Is know. there any way we could maybe like inject the heat and the UV into I our think, bodies? There I has think to be if a you way. Sit inside your oven. <laughs> For long enough, the virus will die. Oh, my God. I'm not even <laughs> Along go- with the body, the host. I'm not even going to go into that, but that was just ridiculous. The damn president, man. All I want is some information. Yeah. Tell me what's going on, and we're talking if about. If we could just go out to our car and ask it, is oh. this the right thing to do? It's amazing. <laughs> man, listen, I'm, I'm having a really good week. Uh, I, I want to give a quick shout-out. You know, last week, um, I, I, I was not having such a great week, and I was kind of honest about it. And afterwards, I... I honestly felt like, man, uh, man, maybe I shouldn't have said something. We're trying to be light and have fun, but I just want to give a shout out to the people that reached out, man. There were there were there were several people, both you know, f- existing friends and also just MMA fans and listeners that, that reached out to me via social media directly, and uh, that was cool, man. It really meant a lot to me, man, to 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 have that kind of 
support or whatever is awesome. So uh, definitely having a much better week, man. I'm back to work, obviously, this week, so I think that helps a little bit keep the mind right and, and uh, you know, get that routine that we're used to. I know you've been on furlough this week. Uh, you said it's been very productive. You've been doing a lot of projects around the house. You were explaining yep. today how you how you <laughs> relocated uh, a pair of lights. From one were. side of the room to the other <laughs> side of the room. <laughs> very productive. Hey, th- that is – would you say it's 10 feet? 12 I mean, it, feet? it changed. It really changed the feel of the studio. I mean, right? as we're here in, I mean, obviously the high tech studio that you would expect <laughs> at the Costa de Cold Coffee. Top notch. I folks. mean, top notch. I mean, literally, I, I, I would not be surprised if the folks at the USC Apex came over and consulted you. I don't know. You didn't tell me that, but I'm assuming they probably came and consulted this facility as they were building the Apex. They actually did. I yeah. knew it. I knew it. There that, there was a draft at one point where couches and an ottoman and two <laughs> non-used kitchen <laughs> tables were going to be in the specs for the Apex. They were like, wait a minute. Those aren't actually necessary. Cold Coffee just never moves them. They, yeah. should, they don't need to be there. They realized that they would have to order a table set Discard the, t- the the other <laughs> table and the other two chairs to only have the two extra chairs, like right here. So they decided that for cost cutting uh, values, that probably wasn't ideal. But uh, yeah, I've been getting some stuff done. Uh, <clears throat> but it's been it's it's been uh, t- this week was definitely better than last week. I felt like last week I was l- or the last week of furlough I was less productive. But right. this one I felt like okay, I've actually did some stuff. But it's funny, you know. I ordered. Here I am. Like I installed a couple more uh, racks off to the side to store gear and stuff. But then there's like, okay, here's a week where you're not working, you're not bringing in money, but you're ordering shit. <laughs> you know, I'm like, this doesn't sound right. But, but that's see, kind of I, I think. Get, what but I get it, man. I, you know, I, I can't judge you at all. Like that's to me. Like I think that's one of the reasons I had such a bad week last week was I didn't stay productive as I should have, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I think that's the mindset for anybody that's laid off or. or I mean, I know it's not easy, man. Uh, I didn't stay as productive as I should have. You know what I mean? I think if I'd have have had my daily goals, you know, when you have work, you know what needs to be accomplished. You know what needs to be done. And so you grind towards that and you do it. I think that's what got to me last week was, like, I didn't really have a plan for each day. And I knew things around the house that I wanted to do. And I got some of them accomplished. But it wasn't like, all right, man, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to bang out this, this, and that. And, you know, next thing you know, it's, you know, it's noon or 1 o'clock and you really haven't done anything. And I I don't know, man. It was hard. But but much better this week. Much better this week. And – uh, dude, I mean, we're almost back to fight week, so I want to talk about that. I uh, also want to talk about, by the way, maybe another reason I'm having a great week, our good friends at Latchkey Brewing. Yeah. Anthony Beach hooked it up, by the way. Always a pleasure when he can set us up for the MMA Roadshow. Uh, sent us a care package from San Diego, California. If you're in San Diego, uh, they're still deli- uh, able. You can pick up product right now. You can't go into their, their tap, just like yeah. everywhere. You can't go sit down right now, but you can still pick up uh, beverages there. 1795 Hancock Street, San Diego, California. Our good buddy mm. Anthony Beach, a hardcore MMA fan. So if you ever want to talk MMA, hit him up on Instagram at anthony.m.beach, and he will chat some MMA with you or uh, follow the company on Instagram at Even Latch better, Key go Brewing. there, sample a bunch of their shit. I'm and telling you, man. Do I'm it. telling you, if I was in the town, I would definitely go get it. We uh, So we started out, by the way, but, but before we started taping today, we were catching up, you know, just saying what's what, because since we don't work together every day, we don't talk yeah. every day like we normally do since we've been on opposite weeks for furlough. So we just sat there and kind of, you know, shooting the breeze a little bit. And we started out with The, uh, the Stranger, yes. which is uh, an imperial stout that registers – 10%. Now, 10% is pretty damn strong for a frosty beverage. And when you couple the fact that it turns out that neither of us really had breakfast or lunch <laughs> today for various reasons, we were both doing different things. Uh, I had a, uh, a Hawaiian roll, one of those little tiny bread things. Oh, yeah. I had one of those. I bought one? Just one. I had bought those some. Those are so sweet and delicious. I had bought some I for sliders. I well, I only had one because it was the only one left. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. makes more sense. I had bought some for sliders. <laughs> I'd made some sliders for the family. There was one left and I was like, well, it's just sitting there. So I ate, I ate that. That's all I've had today. Started out with the 10%. And by the way, uh, to tell you more about the uh, the Imperial Stout, the Stranger. Tell us more. It has Ecuadorian cacao and Madagascar vanilla. And if you go to latchkeybrewing.com, or excuse me, latchkeybrew.com, mm. What they'll tell you about is, beware of stranger danger. This 10% is a creeper. We know all about creepers. Heavy on the chocolate. This beer is well-rounded <laughs> with a kiss of vanilla. So that's what we started with. Yeah, You and, can uh, really taste the chocolate really and the vanilla. Yeah, it, it, uh, there's no fucking creeper. That just that hit. 
<laughs> like, I had to add a roll of uh, Ritz crackers yeah. <laughs> today because I was uh, I went and did some stuff. I uh, was helping out the uh, the Red Cross in this furlough. I've been able to sort of re-engage with that. Volunteering. I've been man. volunteering with them since uh, 2013, so I was able to kind of just re-engage and did some. Uh, been doing more online meetings and stuff with them. So I went and shot some video stuff, but on the way out the door, I didn't realize I hadn't eaten, so I grabbed a thing of Ritz crackers. So I was sitting there in the uh, the parking lot throwing down these Ritz crackers. <laughs> so luckily I had that uh, going into this uh, this stranger, but the stranger, stranger literally – The stranger hit. The stranger hit hard. The stranger it, hit hard on an empty stomach. But what a great name because I, I, I guarantee there's some other dirty birds out there like myself that every time you hear the name Oh, you stranger, know what you're thinking about. You know what you're thinking about. You know what about. you're thinking about. You know what you're thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all Thank right. you, Anthony. Thank you, uh, Latchkey Brewing. Uh, we we switched on though. We are. We're now on to the San Diego 1915. By the way, you sent us these big. I think they're 32 ounce growlers, is what they sent to us. Yeah, they, and, yeah, uh, 32 ounce. Yeah, you can pick them up that way, so you can get you know fresh canned 32 ounce growlers, and then uh, you can take those to the house. And uh, now we moved on to the San Diego 1915. It's, uh, it's a complete opposite. It's a complete opposite. Account. Literally, right now, when Anthony hears this, he'll probably say, my God, why did you drink them in like this order? Like, you would order? never pair this. Like, if, if we sat down and the bartender was like, let me take you on a journey. Yeah. This is not the journey. This is the exact opposite, but we just we did like a random draw. We basically just put them in a cooler and pulled out. Uh, so the random draw came up with the San Diego 1915 is, this unfiltered rice lager is our pride and joy, taking over three months in tanks to perfect. And it's just interesting. It's a, it's a very, very light. Beverage. It's it's it basically the complete really, opposite of the stranger. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, and you made a good point. Like, and I'm sure they would hate me for saying this. Like, when you were suggesting like a, a Kirin or a, a Sapporo or something, if you want to think about like what this might taste to you or, or look like a, a sort of a lager that's lighter, golden color, um, they would probably be like, "Oh no, the the differences are this, this, this." But whatever, um, it's delicious. It's absolutely good, but it is completely opposite of. Yeah. The gut punch that we were getting <laughs> from the stranger. This is uh, if, if if you were properly planning, you would start you with would the start San Diego nineteen fifteen and then move on to the you stranger. You would start with this. Is uh, I was telling John earlier. It's like we went to the amusement park and we hopped on the scariest, most adrenaline rush ride there was to get the party started. Got off of that and walked over to the kids' ride next door <laughs> <laughs> and hopped on it. Like, oh, okay, oh, yeah, this, this is, is refreshing. This is all right. <laughs> this is all right. Well, look, it is, uh, yeah, as you said, shout out to the, the folks at, uh, at Latchkey, especially Anthony, man. He hooks us up, and so that's awesome. Uh, it is damn near fight week again, and I got to say, it feels really good to say that. USC 249 is next week. Jacksonville, Florida is a destination, and, uh, you know, last time we were talking about it, we weren't really sure kind of what the plans were, but uh, since that time, uh, I can confirm that I will be there next week. Um, I'm heading down to Jacksonville, Florida on next Wednesday. Um, flying in the afternoon, and uh, I will stay there through the following Sunday uh, and stay there for all three cards. So I will be on site for all three cards. Uh, limited media is available. We were only allowed to bring one person, so Cole Coffee will not be joining me. Um, but <coughs> the the folks at uh, the UFC did accept uh, our, our request uh, for a credential, and the folks at USA Today and Gannett did, uh, it, it, you know, approve us the expenditures and uh, approve us to go down there. So that is uh, the current plan. Like I said, I'll fly down Wednesday, um, just so everybody's kind of aware of what the what the plans are. Really, we don't know the full the full plans yet. What we know now uh, is that Thursday of Fight Week next week will be um, a virtual media day. I mean, kind of uh, the way our life is now, right? I mean, everybody's on Zoom meetings and whatever else. Uh, but the UFC will be hosting an, an online media day. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to, as far as I understand, I'm not going to be able to get any in-person interviews or anything pre-fight. It'll all be done via this uh, web-based platform. But uh, wanted to get down there just in case there are any interviews available on Thursday, of course. Um, you know, we'll definitely try to talk to uh, UFC staff um, about, you know, kind of what measures are being taken. You know, I mean, it's going to be, as we as we mentioned last week, it's, it's going to be a little bit of a different fight week. It's not going to be just about how you feel and what's the plan, what's yeah. this mean, what's next. A lot of our coverage, I think, is going to be based around what the UFC is doing and how the event is being held and, and that sort of thing. So, Is D-Dub going down there? Uh, my understanding is he'll be there. Uh, my understanding is I will get an night? opportunity to talk to him. Or because I guess I mean, are they going to try to do a televised cer ceremonial? I mean, we don't even know that. I, yeah. So here's the thing: is all we know at this time is that Thursday there's a 
uh, virtual, virtual media, media day. We don't know any of the other uh, the other things. Now, I've I've tried to talk to the USC staff, um, but number one, they've been incredibly busy, and I get that. Um, so it's been you know I haven't been able to stay in touch with them as much as normal. The other thing is, I, you know, to be honest with you, I think they're probably still figuring everything out. You know what I mean? I'm sure they're like you know they're trying to meet all these guidelines and they're trying to meet all these recommendations and all these things. And I'm sure they want to get down there and actually see the space. You know, I mean, you can have an idea of what the plan is or, or, you know, what the, what the, the regulations should be. But until you get down there and you see the space that you have available and you know exactly where it is, um, I did hear that because, you know, um, th that they're actually, I guess, encouraged by what they think they're going to be able to do because this arena is so big and it has so many different spaces and that sort of thing versus when they were trying to do Tachi Palace, which, you know, we heck, we were even talking about back then, Tachi Palace. Not that it's a small place, but it's definitely not – you know, this uh, multi-thousand seat uh, venue that would have all the kind of uh, accommodations and, and luxuries that you would expect with that. I mean, this this arena does. So um, I, I think they're just still trying to figure it out. So what I'm saying to everybody right now is I think I think we'll have a weigh-in stream. I think. I'm not sure. Uh, I, 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 I think we'll be allowed in for the official weigh-ins, but I don't know that. But my plan is to go cover it as normal as, as I can. So what you would expect to come from us, like you said, the the, the official weigh-in stream. To your point, ceremonial weigh-ins. I don't think so. – I mean, there's really no reason for ceremonial weigh-ins. Obviously, there's no fans, and that's normally a fan event. Now, will they even do the face-offs? Uh, you know, typically on the smaller events – now, not that USC 249 will be small, but, but it's small in terms of, like, you're not going to do a big fan thing. You know, they would bring the fighters back at 11.30 a.m. after the 9 to 11 weigh-in period, and they would face them off. Now – are they going to have the face-offs? I don't know. I mean, I mean, certainly that's a piece of a piece of theater that we like to see, man. Those are images that we all like to see. But um, if you're if you're trying to manage, you know, minimize the contacts that you're having, and that's the whole thing is 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 keeping the amount of contacts minimal. I would think you might not even want to do face-offs. Maybe you make sure that the fighters are only within six feet of each other when they're oh, actually nice. competing. It is a possibility. I guess I was just trying to do a quick search of it to, to even see what, I, even though I know that the governor is allowing these events to happen without fans and presence, but what is the number that they're saying? Is it, is it still a gathering of 50 people? Is it a gathering of 10 people? You know, what is it? You know, so maybe even when it came to doing a ceremonial, they might not even fit that threshold. That threshold. So Correct. That's right. Uh, it might be too many people because if you, if you have the uh, – was this an 11 fight card, 12 fight card? That, you know, if you had 22, 24 people, yeah. that's that's, too, that's already too many people, especially because you're gonna you're gonna probably allow them their plus one because you yeah. know somebody to guide them, somebody. Do you even bring ring card girls? I love ring card girls. Do you even bring ring card girls to an event like this? It's uh, look, they're going to. You know, they're going. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, when I say that, I don't actually know, but you know the UFC product, man. They want it to it look the same. The they day, want it to look. It the same. barely makes the a. Uh, 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 broadcast, you know, I mean, like the fans love seeing these beautiful women walk around with the with the 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 round cards, but it just seems like another thing that do you really need it in a time pretty, like this? Pretty outdated practice, right? At the end it of the day, is. it's a pretty outdated I mean, practice. I, I mean, believe me, I'm as man as any anybody else. Yeah, yeah. I love oh, seeing that. I'm shit. not sitting here <laughs> championing for the end of it, like, oh yeah. my gosh, we must abolish but the just, ring card. It is so offensive to women. And I'm not saying that, yeah, but it is a pretty outdated practice, especially in this time now, where it's like, you know, is it really a necessary thing that happens that needs to be there for the fight to take place? You know, if they're going to the point where they're like, okay, you can have one corner person. Because we have to get it under 25 people, you know, and it's like, oh, would you rather another medical person as opposed to maybe, uh, you know, yeah. a, a very attractive ring car girl? Or do you say, fuck that medical so person? So I haven't, you're right, I haven't heard. So I have actually, uh, apparently, um, the some of the government representatives from the state of Florida will be made available to us. So we'll, we'll, we, we will be able to talk to them. Are they going to have their commission in there as well? Yes, so commission, commission, it's definitely, yeah, yeah it's, it's being. That adds to the number as well. I mean, I think they're going to have to minimize it, obviously. I know, um, you know, like the number of inspectors, for instance. Yeah. You know, you got to kind of cut down on the number of inspectors. Um, you know, I think there's discussions about, um, you know, maybe you don't have as many referees. You know, normally, man, they'll have like four or five referees. Right. And I get it. You don't want your guys to be overworked. You want them to be fresh. You want them to be sharp. You want them to be on top of their game. But maybe but you can do a little five, bit that's less. Like, that's like, like two or three fights a person. You figure they have a heck of a lot more commissioners just sitting off to the side, you know, because they'll have two or three assigned to a room. Oh, yeah. You know, so you're looking at 10, I, 10 I, commissioners just sitting in. I remember a UFC event in Texas. And, and I, 
I love my home state. I'm yeah. so proud to be from Texas, and I love Dallas. It's a great town. But our athletic commission is not always fantastic. And I remember a UFC event in Dallas where, like, I, I walked off and I was going to sit at my press row seat. And I just happened to look over and realize – because, you know, there's, like, seats, like, that are marked off, like, who they're yeah. reserved for. There were literally, like, 40 seats marked off for the commission. commission. And I was like, come yeah. on, man. Do you need 40 seats? It's ridiculous. Like, come on. And that's, like uh, – and that's one of those things that nobody really knows, or, or I guess they know, but don't think about it. Even here in Vegas, you know, the commission tries to strong arm to get their way, to get these seats, to get their people, to go see these events, even though the, the promoter's like, screw you, I don't want to give you all these seats, you know, this is for whatever. That's but then part the of the requirement. commission's like, well, maybe we're not going to let you do your event, you know. So when you see that stuff like that, it just like, oh, it makes you, it just makes me a little bit despise some of the stuff that the, the commission does. I get why they need to be there, but, um, oh, sometimes when they do the, their, those little antics, it drives me absolutely crazy because there's no need for 40 commission people at an event when you, you know, even at the, it's funny when you watch some fights and you'll see after the fact, there's like, 12 commission guys in there keeping the fighter separate. It's like, bro, right. you don't Come on. need 12 commission in there. Like, it's just. It's and just even then, ridiculous. it's like, hold on. Do you really need your commission guys who don't necessarily look like maybe maybe you could bring in some like actual security people or yeah. you know what I mean like so right. you're right it's it's fun especially so, if that's what they're going to do because if it came down to it like you'd rather have a someone that's really trained yeah. in security not this, somebody that's yeah. like this 80 year old gentleman <laughs> looks like a fine upstanding citizen <laughs> but I don't, like he looks like a really nice guy and I'm sure but yeah. like is he going to stay in the middle of these we'll see but no so, I mean that I think that's going to be a big part of our coverage as far as hey what's being done how's it being operated and those are things that we're going to want to watch on fight night. I mean, um, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, you know the product's going to look pretty close to the way it does on TV, man. You know their commitment to to the way the product looks. I think it's going to look pretty close on yeah, television. Yeah, they're certainly not going to cut back on camera, guys. Well, well, yeah. here's what I – will they or won't they? Because you could go to a lot more like uh, like jibs and remote operated – like. Yeah, but even then, the, the amount of space that one jib – like even when the, for the longest time they were doing one jib, uh, that would either be – you know, well, if anybody doesn't know what a jib is, it's like the uh, it's, it's like a long like arm a, with the camera. That's right. The, the, that the pole, ba- like a long, you know, an arm, yeah. is better than a pole. You're right. Where yeah. it can be manipulated up and down, left right. and right, and, and uh, usually they'll have one that's in the ra- that's attached to like the rafters. They've done some events, or, or you'll see them sometimes in a in a weigh-ins where they'll have a crane on the ground, right? And they'll you'll see a camera going, and it pisses us off in the back because it always blocks our shot. Swings over and gets right in front of the cameras. Because the TV, it doesn't matter because they'll cut to that camera and it doesn't. You don't notice how it's blocking your shot. But um, even if they did it in the the rafters, you know, I don't really see them doing too many just for the fact of the real estate that it takes. But it is quite possible to do it. But when you put two swinging huge arms in space moving around, then the guys that are operating need to kind of be able to even see Aware what's of going each other. on. And then it just adds a lot of extra stuff. So that can be done, but I would I would think that even two is risky. You know, just for we'll the see. fact of that. But we'll see. You know, you know they're going to remain committed to the to the again the production looking as close to normal yeah. as possible. Um, so we'll see. I, it's going to be interesting to see. Again, I, I've championed from the beginning that I think there is a way to do this safely, and I think now our job as media is to go in there and make sure it's being done safely. So we'll see how everything pans out. Um, I mean, look, we're all figuring out safe ways to go to the store, safe ways to just operate in general, safe yeah. ways to do things. So, um, so we'll see. But it feels good to be uh, to be back. And like I said, I will be down there um, for all uh, all three shows. Um, I am. I will say this. I'll throw this out there just for the. Uh, to the community because I, I do love everybody that and then I no like I said the people that reached out last week man it was so cool to hear that people listen and think about it. but uh, I am missing my son's birthday May twelfth is my son's birthday um, and I had actually promised him that I would not miss any more of his birthdays um, but I will say uh, I appreciate my son understanding that that uh, I had not planned for a global pandemic <laughs> one of the things one of the things that I always said was I can't imagine a fight big enough. That would make me miss my son's birthday. Like even if it was like Connor Diaz three or Connor Habib two or Brock Lesnar coming back or something like that. I said, you know what, man? I've been fortunate enough. I've covered the Dana biggest fight. Tito. Who is it? Dana versus oh, Tito. Oh no, Dana versus Tito. Sorry, kid. I gotta go. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> uh, no, but you know, uh, I I'd always said like, listen, I've been fortunate enough to cover big fights. Um, I I don't mind missing a big fight 
you know, one yeah. big fight. You know, so everybody can fill in for me. Like, my son is only going to have so many birthdays, you know, that I, we can be well, together. Well, he still cares while you're there. Well, he still cares that I'm there, yeah. And uh, so I said I wouldn't. But, you know, it was really cool. Actually, my wife and my, and my son both, like, when I explained to him what, what was going on, I mean, this thing has changed all of our life. Both, uh, both were very understanding. So I'm bummed that I'm going to miss it. But uh, I knew this. Is, uh, even though I've said there's not one fight that can make me miss my kid's birthday, uh, I guess – a global pandemic in the future of the sport, uh, it, 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 it was enough to make me miss. So I'm, I'm a little bummed at that, but um, but I'm anxious to get down there. I'm anxious to watch all this stuff. Look, I'm going to wear a mask on the I'm – gonna, I'm going to wear I – ha, I'll, I'll be honest, too. I have not been a big mask wearer. I've not been, like, when I go to the grocery store wearing masks and that sort of thing. But uh, as far as, like, going to the airport, uh, getting on a plane, um, you know, getting to the hotel, all those things, like, I will definitely wear a mask. Um, shout out to Gannett, by the way. I, uh, they, they've actually sent us uh, a little bit of PPE, you know, the personal protective equipment. They sent us some masks. So that's cool on them. Um, I will maintain the social distancing guidelines. It'll be a weird fight week, right? Like, I mean, look, it's it's not that we – fight week does have a social element. Like, we all work like 14-hour yeah. days, but it is fun to go see people. You know I mean? We're this traveling road show that moves from town to town, right? Uh, traveling circus. Traveling circus, man. Um Look, do, do, will I have a frosty beverage or two with people? Yeah, I probably will. But guess what? We're going to be six feet apart. You know what I mean? We're not going to we're not going to hang out. We're not gonna, no fist bumps like we said. No, bro- so it is. It's it's going to be a unique experience for the UFC. It's going to be a unique experience for us. Um, but uh, but yeah, well, shoot. yeah. I think you're, it's going to be interesting to see a town to see what is opened up. You know, to see how Jacksonville if they're starting to open up this. I mean, what is going to be available? I mean, is it at the hotel or wherever that's going to be, or is it? Just a matter of getting beers to go back to an Airbnb. I mean, um, it'd be interesting to see. I mean, it'd be nice to be able to report and see how a city is starting to open back up. Because especially even here in Vegas, we haven't even started. I mean, we're yeah. the the plan is to start going that way, but there is no no plan. So it's interesting to see of a of a city that's starting to move in that direction. I'll tell you, you mentioned you mentioned Airbnb there, and uh, I, I know this is an MMA show, and we'll talk as much MMA as possible. But this is this is unique. I mean, this is kind of a, yeah. an interesting week, right? I think you know we, you and I use Airbnb a lot. Yeah. Um, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't know like if I'd be comfortable staying in Airbnb right now. I think I feel I feel much more safe or trusting. Even though that may sound weird, like in an Airbnb, you're talking about one person cleaning one property, right? Whereas in an, in a in a hotel, you're talking about potentially hundreds of rooms and, and thousands of rooms. If you're talking about Vegas, but we all know that nobody's booking thousands of rooms right now. I think I'd feel more safe at like a corporation that has like a lot of money on the line, that has a lot to lose, that they feel a need to protect. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I'd feel safe staying in an Airbnb right now. Like I, I don't know if I would if I would feel that like, hey, did that property owner actually? Do all the necessary sanitation procedures. But you also got to wonder: Did that hotel not furlough people? Did they not lay off staff? Are they fully staffed? Because at this point, they're not booking rooms, so it's not like they kept it's a full too. full staff of cleaners. So now you're hoping for this huge hotel that they keep all those rooms clean, you know? Or I know, and and I know. get what you're saying. That's why normally, like, like, I, dude, I, on a on a normal busy week, like, do I expect the hotel? Like, you know. You know people. I mean, hell, we know people that work at hotels. You know they take shortcuts. You know what I mean? They got dozens and dozens of rooms to clean. You know they kind of just swipe by here, you know, and don't handle everything perfect. So I get it, but it's weird, man. uh, My confidence right now in an Airbnb I think would be a little bit less normal. Even though we use it all the time, man, I think I'd be a little bit bit concerned. So. Do you know Jacksonville is named after Andrew Jackson? I did not know that. Yeah, I didn't really know it either. But according to Wiki, and it's on the Internet, so you have to believe it, and it also uh, wait, some of the nicknames I thought were really sort of funny. Jax, the River City, Jayville, the Bold New City of the South. That's like a nobody calls it I'm that. Like, 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 where are you from? The Bold New City What's of the up, South. What's up, player? Bold New City of the South. Or uh, Duval, <laughs> whatever that means. Duval. Duval. D U V A L. I'm not even sure what Big that means. Big Bob Duval fans. Are it's like, it's wow, the last like, one on the nickname list. It's not alphabetical, so maybe something came up. Like I would a movie. move that ahead of the other one. Of the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> no, of, of the what was it? The new city. The bold new city yeah. of the South. I'll go with Duval over the bold new city of the South. And the motto is, "Where Florida begins, it's easier here." I, I feel like I should say that differently. Where Florida begins, it's easier here. <laughs> 
That okay, is look, the motto. If your if your city's motto needs a pronunciation guide to make sure that the <laughs> emphasis is on the right <laughs> place, is on the right area. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not really a good motto. So whoever got paid to, to come up with that motto by their their corporate, it's the same person that gave them the nickname the Bold New oh. City of the <laughs> South. He's like, guys, I got a package deal. Trust me, this is going to work. You're going to love this. So, yeah, man. So, listen, I'll I'll, uh, I'll check in from Jacksonville. Uh, like I said, I'm flying down Wednesday. I don't know who's going to be there media-wise. I do know that um, Oscar Willis is going to be there from the Mac Life, so I'm sure that uh, I'll probably grab him again. We'll stay six feet away. In fact, since it's Oscar, I'll probably stay eight feet away just to be extra safe. But he's so cute. <laughs> Just get him nice and close. Just squeeze him. I'll probably stay eight feet away from Oscar. You never know what kind of ex- extra extra yeah. coronavirus he might have. You know what I'm saying? He's got some. Uh, he's got some else. He, going he on. got COVID 22. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay away from him a little bit, but I'm sure we'll have him on. Um, but yeah, so basically, I fly in pretty late Wednesday night. So I'll just have kind of the one day to report on and talk about. But hopefully I'll have some interviews uh, with some civic officials and that sort of thing and, and maybe some company officials as well. So uh, we'll definitely have a, a road show. Uh, and then, of course, the return of and a half on the uh, Patreon.com, which we'll talk about later. So if, you, if you're down for the and a half shows, make sure you go to Patreon.com slash the MMA Road Show and get signed up there. Um, so that's kind of the, the plans for next week. As far as Fight Island goes, um, I was – I, I I I was I was talking to the, the junkie radio guys earlier. I have literally been able to get zero information on this. Normally, normally, like there may be some things I can't talk about. There may be some things I, I you know some details I can't share because I learned them through people that uh, would lose their jobs or you know. But but I know a little something. I may when I'm when I'm when I'm when I'm throwing out thoughts and I'm throwing out feelings. I probably got a pretty educated guess as to what I'm talking about. Fight Island. I have no idea where it's at, what it's going to be like, what it's going to be about. I was told that it seems it will be possible for media to cover those events. Um, now, at what cost? You know, will, will Gannett USA Today, will they be okay with that? I mean, if they're like, yeah, um, man, this place is uh, its just off the, the southeastern tip of Madagascar, but you can go if you want. Uh, I can't imagine, you know, us being able to foot that bill of getting there. Uh, so I don't know. As far as will we be able to cover, will MMA Junkie, will the Roadshow be able to bring you details from Fight Island? Um, I don't know yet. I'm, I'm told that media will be able, the same, you know, again, very, very limited, limited, limited media available um, to, to, to go to these shows in Florida, and, and the same thing will be uh, true for the Fight Island shows. But I'll be honest with you, and I haven't even spoken to you about this. I, asked, I was saying, I was talking to the radio guys, Asking them if they had had heard anything, so I'll just put you on the spot. Uh, have you? I know you still have contacts as a former UFC employee. I mean, do you have any information at all on 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 just a glimmer of information that you can give us? <laughs> right now, I'm shaking my head because honestly, um, I had moved some lights across my room from the studio, and I really just shut down everything else in my life. I, after I did that, I was like. <sighs> I, I can't even think of MMA. I'm so tired. A man can only do so much. Can only a man do can only so do so much, much in a day. You know, uh, I should. Uh, I honestly haven't reached out. I really, really should. But honestly, <laughs> I think dealing with this like weird life cycle that we're in right now, I haven't reached out like I normally would. Like if we we're in our normal fight week, fight week, fight week, fight week. Oh, hey, let's get a little heads up just so we have a little heads up. Uh, I haven't had the desire to bug because even some of our, even some of the it, my buddies that are still there, they're still a lot of them are still kind of shook up. They're all working from home, most of them, um, and and it's just it felt weird to sort of reach out because it was just like dealing with I think my own like sort of stuff. So I I it's been easy. Totally get it. I think it's been easy a- after that first week. It's been easy for me to kind of turn off the MMA brain and try to think about what else in your life is lacking so i haven't really but um now that it feels like we are getting back to normal i think i will reach out i do know one of my friends is going to be there for the event and he was asking uh like fight island well uh, no these coming all these coming like forward. i don't think they even know who's doing fight island okay. at this point um i can say that yeah it seems like they don't even know where it is like the people i talked to don't know where it is don't know okay, who's going to be working getting the information it. but that's See, it but i mean but that's information. but that's Cold coffee. It's By no the way, let me remind you. Let me remind you. You may be furloughed from USA Today and Gannett and MMA Junkie. Mm-hmm. You were not furloughed from the MMA Roadshow, sir. So just, oh, just be aware point. of that, okay? Listen, 
your employment contract <laughs> with the MMA Roadshow did not allow for any furloughs. So Darn this, it. this I'm checking out, and I'm I'm busy doing other stuff. I'm busy Listen, moving light twelve feet across the room. I'm just gonna tell you the next time we have a full staff meeting, <laughs> uh, it's you're gonna have to Is answer this? for this. Oh no! There are people that are not gonna appreciate. You not handling business during this time, okay? Darn so it. I'm just warning you now, as kindly, as just as a fellow coworker, <laughs> that the bosses at the MMA Roadshow uh, will not look kindly upon this. So let's get, appreci- let's get back to the real information they- that you were sharing there. <laughs> will they appreciate that my Xbox plane has gotten better? <laughs> <laughs> After a few couple of rough days, it has gotten much better. But it's, I'll tell you what's funny, better. man. I I, uh, I try to limit my kids' like video game and screen time and all that. Yeah. But like during this, man, dude, I'm sorry. Like you yeah. cannot keep your kid like engaged. And my my wife, like one of her big things has always been like she didn't want him playing uh, like shooting games and all that, which I yeah. get it. You know, like the violence and all that. I, I understand. I mean, there's a maturity well, does level. Violence so. in video games right. lead to violence yeah. in real life. What? No, I but I feel like th- that's an age old argument. It is an age old <laughs> argument. But you know, so I get it, you know. I, I I was like whatever, you know. So but it's funny so like uh you know, she never let him play Fortnite. That was the thing like he's I mean, he's uh, only 7. He turns 8 in in 2 weeks, but she never let him play Fortnite. But it's hilarious because now like and I don't know, thankfully she doesn't listen to the podcast, but I don't even she like he's playing the uh what is it, the Battlefield Mobile like he's playing Oh, so it's like battle It's, it's, it's the same, same sort of thing. thing. Yeah, he's he's Royale. playing it like 24/7, but I think even my wife who is the most involved mo- like my wife is a G, dude. She has been handling all the school. She's been engaging. She's been uh, organizing like social events so that like you know social distancing, but at least he gets to see friends. I mean, yeah. like, dude, she handles everything with him. But like, I think she's even gotten to the point now where like she just doesn't even look at what he's playing anymore. Yeah, because he's playing that like twenty four seven. Yeah, at least he's she's like. Something. I think basically she's like, oh. At least he's leaving me alone for a couple of minutes. That's it. You know? At least it's not that devil Fortnite. It's not Fortnite. It's, it's, just, it's just the exact same thing except more realistic graphics. Yeah, <laughs> it, is, it is pretty crazy. I mean, it's funny. I think when we were kids, everybody was like, get outside and play. Go outside and play. Don't sit inside and play video games. But at a point now where it's like, you can't just go outside and play. You can't go outside and find your friends. You know, I can definitely see where, uh, you know, they have to use these games. But also, I, I agree. I mean, I... I believe in, you know, I, I can only imagine what it's like when you just want your kid, you just want your own time. So if you, you're, you're constantly having to be on as a parent when your kid's there. So I get it, man. I can only imagine. I feel for people that have the kids that have to deal with it, you know, to want that moment. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, when you came over to the house earlier, I nap, I was napping on the couch. <laughs> you know, it was like midday. I was like, oh, well, you know, I did some stuff earlier today. I felt like I, I, I moved I those took, two lights, man. I, I moved really- some lights. <laughs> I went and did a Red Cross shoot. I'm like, I'm feeling confident, and I just took a nap. And like, you can't home, you can't go home no. and just do that, you know. No, so I get it, where it's just like you just want your kid to just leave you alone for a little bit, you know. <laughs> Sounds so bad. There's to times say. when when Age and H gets home, I'm just like, go watch your TV show, <laughs> go do your, go watch your TV show, go dr- go drink your mom juice, and just do your thing, you know. I, but so I'll I tell you it. what, though, man, I'm I'm gutted for the kids, man. Obviously, my own kid, but just kids everywhere, man. Like they're just not getting to live a normal kid life right now, you know what I mean? And that part. Or sucks. is it perfect because they're literally just getting to play? We're good right now. Speaking of Age and H, come yeah. in. It she some, came in loaded with a some PBR. With some PBR. PBR, but normally ask, ask her why she's bringing the PBR for her. No, because she's drinking uh, to our stash. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she had to replace the she's stash that we had built up. She's she replenishing. Did. That's funny. Well, fortunately, the fine folks at Lashkey Brewing had taken care. I was going to say week. at this point with this stuff, especially still after that uh, that Stranger Danger. The stranger was good. Woo! Everything else is going to feel like water. All right. So listen, let's let's talk real quickly about two forty nine. I want to talk to you about Tony Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje because I mean it's not the fight we wanted. Of course, man, we wanted Tony Ferguson versus Habib Nurmagomedov. That's the fight we wanted. That's the fight we've been begging for. Um, but I think it's a pretty damn good fight. I'm excited about it. Yeah. I've heard a lot of people saying that they think it's disrespectful that Tony Ferguson has to fight for an interim title again, and I get that. It is right, but as I've said before. It would be more disrespectful if there wasn't a title on the line, and you can't strip Habib. I mean, Habib, yeah. Habib did everything he could here, right? I mean, he 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 went from from California to Abu Dhabi to Russia. I mean, he, he thought he was doing all the right things. You can't strip Habib right now. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's Ramadan right now. Uh, you know, 
every I mean, he's made it clear for years he just doesn't fight during Ramadan. This is not like just something he's surprised everybody with or whatever. Yeah. So you know what I mean? Like stripping Habib would just it's it's not even a question. It'd be number one bullshit. It would be number one bullshit. You can't do that. But you don't want to make this fight and not have a title on the line. So I I, yeah. I disagree with the opinion that it's disrespectful to make Tony Ferguson fight for an interim title again. Uh, it, it, a belt deserves to be on the line. But I don't know. I kind of want to ask you because I, the, here's the, the, the curious thing that I'm trying to weigh right now is really is is kind of like who's taking the bigger risk here? Like who's, who's kind of doing something they don't need to do or don't have to do more? Because – you got Tony Ferguson, who has earned the shot with Habib, right? Like, if he said, look, I'm sorry, I'm out, I'm waiting for Habib, nobody could get mad at him, right? I mean, this dude, I mean, the, the streak that he's been on and, and, and the, the times it's taken for him to build here and all the things he's gone through, man, he does not have to take this fight, especially against Justin Gaethje, who is just insanely powerful, insanely aggressive, insanely crazy, can knock out anybody, um, is going to put you in a fight. And I think that's why everybody likes this fight because it's, it's bound to be violence. But then you also have Justin Gaethje, who has always said, I don't take fights on short notice. I know that I, that's not you know the way I need to handle my career. That's not the way I need to handle myself. I need full camps. And then he said, you know, I'm going to jump in on April 18th because the world needs this. I feel a, I feel almost an obligation to the world to do this. But then it gets moved, and I'm sure he can be like, "Nah, man, you know, I was I was willing to do it like this because it was just so crazy and the MMA world needed it. I was willing to do it, but now I can back out." And 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 Gaethje, I mean, Gaethje's got that that fight with Connor lined up. It seems like in the summer. Now, debatable whether Connor would fight under these circumstances with no crowds and all that, but um so I don't know, man. I, I mean, I respect the hell out of both these guys for taking the fight, but I guess what I'm, I'm trying to figure out is which one of these guys do you think is 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 taking a greater risk in terms of their career? Which one has more to lose? Which one will a loss hurt the most? For me, that that's an easy answer, and I in my in my eyes, it's it's Ferguson hands down. I mean, Gaethje has nothing to lose by losing this fight. The whole Conor fight, it's not even a real thing at this point. So it's not like the, the, the fact that, that with a loss that wouldn't happen or whatever. If Conor wants that to happen, that fight's still going to happen. There's no biggie. And with the fact that Gagey, he's on, what, like a three-fight win streak, you know, from the last time he had a loss. Tony hasn't lost since, like, 2012. That's crazy, man. Or something. Um, but what's kind of funny, and when you started talking about this fight – it, you know, of course, we want to see Habib and Tony fight, but with and maybe it's just because it's rolled up in the fact of this crazy world pandemic and all this other stuff of with life being tossed upside down. I don't miss it like I thought I would. Like once this fight, now that this fight is the fight, is it because I'm just so happy to see a top level fight? I don't care that I'm not seeing Tony and Habib. Because one, I know Justin's going to bring. I know everybody knows what they're going to get from a Gagey fight. Everyone knows what they're going to get from a Ferguson fight. I don't think either guy is going to go in any less because it's not maybe the opponent that they wanted first. That's a great question because I'll tell you what I I uh, I feel the same way, right? Like it's the, like we all know that that's the fight we wanted to see. And we're not getting it. I do not feel disappointed with this fight at all. Not at all. But I had not even thought about the fact. Is it simply because? Damn it! I need to see a fight because to me, to me, the reason is because you know, I mean, when you talk about two of the most guaranteed action fighters, two of the most, you, I mean, it doesn't matter. You know, Tony Ferguson versus anybody, right. I'm in. Justin Gaethje versus anybody, I'm in because you know those guys are going to make it a fight. Yeah. So that they're going against each other, it has to be fireworks, yep. right? Dude, honestly, think about it. I'm just going to jump down in the card. If Uriah Hall was headlining against Jacare Souza. I'd be absolutely stoked <laughs> at this point. <laughs> I see what you're ask, saying. Ask yourself, would, saying, you not, no. would you not be stoked? Oh, yeah. I'd be like, dude, I cannot wait to get fight week so the fact So the fact that we're getting Tony Ferguson versus Justin Gagey is literally like if it, if it had been raining here for three weeks and the sun finally cracked open the sky and that first ray of sunlight uh -huh. came down. And, yes, we're hearing, <laughs> we're hearing angels' voices. This <coughs> – this is what I feel for this fight. I mean, so there is a lot of gratitude that fighters are putting themselves 
back in harm's way for our entertainment. Thank you, Lord <laughs> Jesus. Thank you. Oh, Thank so... you, Spaghetti God. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everything. Um, I don't miss the Spaghetti fact that it's... Spaghetti God. Yeah, uh, well, it's a, it's okay. a long. It's a, <laughs> it doesn't sound like it's, I almost didn't say anything. There is, there is a great that sounds like a very guy. long story. There's a great spaghetti god out there. Don't you know this? Uh, uh, so I don't miss the fact. It's so so much time has already went beyond the point of where uh, Habib was and fought. I've already went through my grief stage and I've already moved right. on. Now I'm so excited for this one because I just know in the two fight styles. So going back to your original question, Tony certainly because if we would jump back into if this wasn't going on, uh, his place where he would drop with the loss. I still think even with the loss to a guy like Justin Gagey, it's not like he's got to rebuild his career back after it by yeah. any means. But the thing with Justin, Justin, he's been sort of hinting over the last year or two. He doesn't have forever left either. So I'm glad to see him getting in there and getting a fight for an interim title, getting uh, these fights that he wants, even if it's not maybe at the right time. Justin's one of these guys that he's done his time, and I I would be surprised that Justin still wants to do it. Maybe in two years from now, I'd be yeah. surprised if Justin. Yeah, he's always still said, fighting. "Look, my time's limited. I'm yeah. only can I'm, I, I fight this way because I know I can only fight so long." Yeah, and this is not like this is not like oh skills diminishing. Or this is what he has yeah, said. Yeah. Like he Just doesn't want to put his body through. He it. doesn't want to keep put keep doing this. So I mean, I'm so happy that he's going to get in there, get a chance, get a nice big paycheck, get a possibility, get an interim title. Which then, if he gets the interim title, he knows once. Uh, Habib's able to come back. He gets another big one, so it's great for him. We did a live chat the other day on on uh, on YouTube, and I did it with the radio, uh, the Junkie Radio guys. And there was a commenter that jumped in during that time, and we were taking like questions in the little uh, comment section or whatever. And he actually made more of a statement. I apologize, I don't remember his name at this point, but he was saying, "Look, I think if Tony loses this fight, like yes, Ju uh, Justin should get the first title shot, at Habib." But yeah. Tony should still get one too, and and that's not necessarily the way the UFC operates. Yeah. But honestly, or should, that's he not should at a, least still stay right at the in, so, in the running. So I agree with you what you're saying. I, I, when you make the case that you made, because in my head I'm like, who's taking a bigger risk? When you made the case that you made, I agree with you. You're right. Tony's putting more on the line here because of where he's built up to and what he's done. Yeah. He's putting more on the line here. But honestly. I wouldn't hate if the UFC went that way. Like if Justin wins and you say, all right, look, it's Gaethje Habib next. Cool. But then all of a sudden in February or whatever of next year, Ferguson gets the next title shot. Like I can't imagine anybody would be like, nah, man, Who's nah, man, that's bullshit, that? bro. He lost. He lost because like he's he's had to jump through these hoops. He's been yeah. messed around. You know, he went that. You know, he if he loses in this, you know, it would just not that I'm trying to build in excuses or build in reasons, yeah. but yeah, you could make the case that nah, man, still give him a title shot. I, mean, I don't yeah. know if the UFC would do that, but. I think you are right that that Ferguson's definitely put more on the line, but at the same time, I honestly wouldn't hate that even if he lost, he still eventually got a title yeah. shot without winning another fight. Without yeah. winning another fight. I think that's you know when you even think about it, when a lot of times we look at these, we always say, oh, this is a this is a contender fight. This is a number one contender fight. But when you say something like that, and where you can say it, you're ar already saying either one of these uh, uh, combatants should be able to get a chance right. to, for the title. Unfortunately, for that. Contender shot, one of them has to lose, but it doesn't mean that they're any less a good fighter. They just lost that particular fight. True. They're still right there at the top. And in and, and this sort of situation, especially the fact that this fight has seemed cursed for so long, should Justin prevail in this one, Tony should still be right there. And, I mean, who who is there that can, can step no. it even with the loss? And you know what, man? And, and this is what crossed my mind when you were saying that because you're absolutely right. Here's what crossed my mind is that especially in a number one contender fight like this. So take, for instance, like Francis Naganu versus Jairzinho Rosenstruck, right? That seems also like it's probably a number one yeah, contender, contender fight, fight, right? For sure. So number one contender fight. Now, if, if Jairzinho loses – I would contend that, okay, hold on. He just got to the U.S. He had an amazing yeah. year. He got here. He's been fast-tracked. He, exactly. He deserved it, and he got fast-tracked. But you lost. Now you got to yeah. drop back down a little bit. So there yeah. are certain scenarios yeah. where even in a number one contender fight, the guy that loses does go down a few pegs. Yeah. But this is the type of scenario where you're right. Whether it's Ferguson, whether it's Gaethje, whoever loses, 
They don't, it's not yeah. like, oh, sorry, bro, you're number 10 now, and yeah. you got to be 8, 5, and 2 to get your way back. Like, nah, dude, you're still right there. Yeah, I mean, neither one of these guys has been fast-tracked. These guys are, you know, especially Justin, I mean, not even looking outside of the UFC, his performances that he's put – in the UFC, I mean, the dude's oh, they've a champ. Been amazing. And, I mean, and you could just look at the run that Tony has. I mean, what is it? Six fights and seven bonuses? That's insane. Something More ridiculous. bonuses than fights. That's crazy. Some, something absolutely ridiculous. Uh, which is just crazy. Um, and then yeah, like I said, Ferguson, man, the the, the winning streak is just yeah. Nuts. I mean, neither one of these guys. But you 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 make a good point. I didn't really think about. It, but yeah, if somebody's been sort of fast tracked up, you know, it's quick. Where because a lot of people are like, oh, you know. They were the pretty one. They were the they were the golden right. boy, you know. We saw when when Sage started taking loss, and it was like, okay, well, we'll see a Sage, yep. you know. Um, whereas if the if if the UFC at the time, if he would have kept winning, he would have had that next title shot. That's right. He knew it, you know. Yeah, if you get fast tracked, you might bump down a little bit. But yeah. if you haven't been fast tracked, if you got the resume and you got the skins in the wall, I think you deserve to be. Let me touch on one other thing real quick about Ferguson Gage team. Obviously, we'll talk about it again next week, um, but. Uh, there was a Q&A uh, uh, on Reddit. Uh, Dana White didn't ask me anything. And uh, there was a question, how confident are you that Habib and Tony will fight at some point this year? And his answer was, Dana's answer was, not very. I'm afraid of what will happen next if we try to make that happen again. Now, we ran a story on it, of course. I mean, those that's that's it's very story-worthy. Every website ran a story on it. Yeah. What I do want to say is, I think that was a little bit tongue in cheek, man. I, and because I, I, what I what I heard, I, I've seen some reaction out there of people are saying, "Oh, Dana doesn't think it'll happen. Like maybe he's not willing to put this fight together. Maybe Connor will slip in." And of course, Connor can always slip in, man. There is the interesting thing about Connor that that we keep talking about in this scenario: um, Will Connor fight in front of no audience? You know, of course, right now Connor's dialed in to keeping everything closed and secure, man. He's been doing a lot of you know messaging on that, which is good for him. But it is interesting. Like, would he fight in front of? No fans, because I feel like he's such a you know a fan guy. He needs that kind of experience, or whatever. But all that aside, I mean, he definitely generates money. But I just wanted to point out because I've seen a lot of people put a lot of faith in this that Dana was saying not very. But when he comes back and says, "I'm afraid of what will happen next if we try to make that fight happen again," I think that's playing into the joke, right? Like we tried to make it once, twice, three times, four times. The fifth time, it's a damn global pandemic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the pandemic to, started after this fight was made. To, to <laughs> me, yeah, exactly. So to me, like I get because we've all had that joke, right, dude? If they, I know in the media we were like, man, if they book it again, like the locusts are coming down or whatever. You they know, might the, have the big earthquake yeah, where the California, California will break drops off into of. the ocean, right? <laughs> but it, to, so to me. I don't know. I just want to throw that out there because I saw a lot of people putting credence. Of course, we ran a, a story on it. We did. I mean, everybody did. It is. It is a real story. But I would just caution, and, and I'll ask Dana about this when I see him next week. I'm, I'm told I'll, we'll get to talk to him at some point. Um, I, I think that was kind of a joke, like a tongue yeah. in cheek. Like you I know what see I mean? Where it was tongue in cheek. As I think well. it was tongue in cheek. Well, and plus two, like we're looking at May here. I mean, when you when you put the question like, is it going to happen this year? Yes, most fighters in a perfect situation want to make sure they have a time for a perfect camp. There's plenty of time in six months to, to get a, a a camp in, but with the way that the, the, the world situation is right now, I mean, you don't know. it would have been a little bit better to just ask, will this fight happen at some point? Will they ever fight? Yeah, Will, will they, they ever yeah. fight? I get, and, I, and I bet the answer would be very different than what could be a, a tongue-in-cheek reality. Because when you think about it in, in a tongue-in-cheek sense – it's pretty damn hilarious. Right. Where it's like, look what happened this time when we tried <laughs> yeah, to Yeah, we caused the pandemic we, yeah, by we booking this. The, pandemic. the MMA time, gods caused the pandemic. Yeah. And when you think of it in that sense, you know, it can be really, really funny. And then you're like, okay, yeah, that's just obscene. Um, but when you think of the term, it's different. I mean, we're already almost halfway through the year. This year already, I mean, maybe it's due to getting older. The year just seems to go faster and yeah. faster It's April. And faster. It's done. <laughs> you know, like the year's already done. We're done, you know. Like, no, let's but, you, but you, make a, you make a fair point because I, I will say this again. And we, I mean, I don't think we're, you know, we're the political types or whatever. But if we're just being realistic, again, as we said from the beginning, until there's a vaccine for this, it's still going to be dangerous, right? That's what, yeah. that's what we said, or at least I said. I won't necessarily put you into my opinion from day one. Is it like, look. April 18th versus April 25th versus May 1st, June 1st, July 1st, August 1st, September 1st. Nothing is going to change in terms of how you need to operate. Like the yeah. way you stay away from the virus is always going to be the same until we have a vaccine. The reason I say that is that it would not shock me if 
September, October, November, whatever it is, all of a sudden we're back to full lockdown again. You know what I mean? Like, so what you're saying Most is true. Most people are saying in the fall, like we might be revisited I, with this. I tend to agree. Know, I'll be honest. Down. I tend yeah. to agree with it. Like, hey, right now we're kind of in the midst of this reopening, and hey, uh, restaurants can be at twenty five percent capacity. Are up. And, things are a little bit better. That's right. There's little things, but it would not shock me at all if in certain parts of the country or if in certain uh, or the whole country like it's you know the, the the levels change hey we're going back you know i was i was telling my wife like this I, you know i believe moving forward i mean maybe it'll just be until there's a, 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 a you know a vaccine for this but this idea of like social distancing uh, measures will uh, it'll just be like uh, the levels of it will just be something that's with us for the rest of our lives like yeah. hey by the way code 1 is all code yeah. 2 is all you know whatever you know what i mean and so that means now you have to wear a mask or now yeah. you, you know what i mean so so anyway uh, I, I i just want to warn people about that again like not to get too political but i think what you're saying is right the idea that we're getting back to business next week is exciting um, but I would just caution as plans go on. Remember, like I think things. I think we might have a run of events, and then all of a sudden we're back to no events, and yeah. then we get a run of events, and then we're back to no events. You yeah. know what I mean? I, I, until there's a vaccine, I think that's a possibility. Yeah, and I think you're right. I think it's going to be a matter of uh, being able to deal with this better. We've ne in our lifetime, we've never had to deal Nothing. with something like this. Nope. So the way that we're changing our life and the way that things will be adjusted, I, I agree with you. Well, one, we'll be better prepared should something like this ever happen again. Because we'll understand it right away. Boom, change, flip the switch. Yep, yep. go home, everybody yep. work from home. We know that. We know can, how to do we it. We know it can be done. Yep. You know, so I agree with you too. It's just, it's hard to, we want to rush so bad to get back to normal, but we have to understand that we're nowhere by any means in the clear that this thing mm -mm. can go. Um I need to. Uh, I wanted to double check, but uh, yeah, whatever. Our governor's on this on the stage. We should wrap this up. Do we have audio? We should go to some audio so we can watch this. <laughs> All right, our governor's speaking, so we do have some audio. We'll go. Uh, listen, I had a chance before I came over here, just a few minutes before I left to, to come over here, uh, to chance to talk to the the heavyweight champ, Stepe Miocic, who is uh, oh, of course, get. yeah, yeah, good kid, right, man? Good he's a, he's he's a front line uh, kind of guy. He's out there doing that. Um, he's actually got a cool thing, man. Uh, his partners at Modelo are actually teaming up uh, on Cinco de Mayo. He'll tell you all about it. By the way, he nails the copy points on it. They That's had awesome. him prepped <laughs> so good. He nails the copy That's points. That's why he's the champ. But, you know, this, uh, the, the folks at Modelo, uh, they know that we like frosty beverages, and they were like, hey, we're doing this deal on Cinco de Mayo where they've, they've already donated $500,000 to first-line defenders. That's awesome. And they're, you can do up to another $500,000. they are basing it on a, on a hashtag campaign. Uh, sync up, it, but it's like instead of C I N. -C there you go. See the Cinco de Mayo. So, C -I -N -C -U -P. so the hashtag is C I N C U P. So all you gotta do is drink a Modelo on Cinco de Mayo. Take a picture of yourself drinking the Cinco de Mayo. Use the hashtag, and they're doing. Uh, I believe it's a dollar per post, no up shit. to five hundred thousand. So I'm like, hold on. You're asking if I will help support you <laughs> by drinking by beer drinking and beer it. and ha I was like I got you dog I got you uh, so anyway I, I had a chance to talk to Stepe uh, consider and this pandemic <laughs> covered it's over we got this uh, so I had just to talked to him about the campaign uh, about his life right now as a first responder of course and then of course uh, you have some questions about uh, his career and what he thinks about the Nagano Rosenstruck fight that we were talking about uh, and yeah here's Stepe while we go listen to the governor talk about our future. Stipe, thanks for taking the time, man. I appreciate it, brother. Oh, thanks for having me, man. No worries. So l let me know, man. What's life for you like right now, man? I mean, obviously this thing is affecting everybody, but, I mean, you being a first responder as well, what uh, what's life like for you right now, brother? Uh, you know, I just, uh, I actually just, you know, it just sucks being at home, you know, with quarantine, but it's just, uh, just being more clean, being more, you know, cautious when I go to work, you know, being smart. I'll check my temperature you know, before I get to the station. Or when I walk, walk through the station, uh, and make sure I'm wearing goggles and mask and gloves if they have to wear an apron. But, you know, so far it's so good. We haven't really got anything crazy and a ton of calls about it. So, we, you know, we've got a few, but nothing unordinary. So, they just, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been great, you know, just because people are actually listening. And, that, you know, hence, it's why I love my dad and it's why I'm teaming up with them to uh, do this, uh, you know, hashtag sync up. You know, so everyone on uh, Tuesday for single de Mile, celebrating single de Mile at home. You know, um, posting a picture for view everyone over 21. That'd be the smart thing to do. <laughs> uh, you know, post a picture of them celebrating Cinco de Mayo. Um, and underneath uh, on the social media platform, type, uh, type in a hashtag C I N C U P. And every time they, uh, uh, someone posts that, uh, I was actually donating a dollar back to the first responders. 
Yeah, man, it's a great program that uh, that I was reading the details about earlier. I mean, what, when they came to you with this, uh, what, what were your initial thoughts? I mean, obviously, I know you, you like being partnered up with the company, but then when you found back there, you know, they're donating to something that probably means so much to you. What what, what was that feeling like for you? Uh, it's amazing. It's very, they've already donated, you know, prior, which is great. And, uh, and, and which is just crazy. And then, then they come back to, you know, with, with another idea, which... I was, you know, they're just, they're such an amazing company. They're, they're, they're all about giving back. You know, they're always looking to help out and, uh, you know, they're doing, it's, it's amazing. And, uh, you know, of course I was on board right away with no questions asked, you know, even if it wasn't first response, but, you know, but they're, you know, they, 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 they want to give back and you, and it's, uh, it's your time to find out in the world, you know, just good, good, good people. And, you know, just awesome. Honestly, I'm so speechless sometimes. I gotta say, it's it's the kind of fundraising I can get behind. All I have to do is drink beer, and I help people raise money. That's a that's a pretty darn good uh, uh, fundraiser there. Not gonna lie, all my friends are like sold. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Steve, tell me, just um, I mean, for for you in your daily life, man, help us understand. Because me, man, I'm just a journalist holed up in my in my house. You know, I'm not having to be out there on the front lines. I mean, I know firefighting already is a dangerous occupation, but. Um, has this made life scarier for you at all? Or, I mean, I mean, is there fearful on a daily basis, or do you have to deal with that? I mean, what's what's the feelings like on a daily basis going to work? I mean, yeah, you just, I mean, like especially for my daughter, my wife, you know, so I don't want to like you know bring it home or you know, but uh, at the same time, you just uh, it's this what we signed up for. Then when that you know, it's the first spot of firefighter, paramedic, nurse, doctor, it's what they signed up for. They know that these things can happen, you know, and. No one thought in a million years in our lifetime we'd be part of a pandemic, you know. And uh, I think uh, I think it doesn't matter what we do. I mean, I could really be walking down the street and you know, or, or he, a tree branch could fall me and you know, and take me out. You you just don't know. And just uh, so you just gotta just don't don't take it for granted and just uh, just keep working and just be, just be smart, you know. And just and I think everyone is being smart, you know. They're not you know going out of the way and just not caring. They, they believe that you know there's this is bad and people are listening and you can definitely see the difference you know it's definitely it has not spread it it's, it's getting down and especially Ohio it's definitely calmed down you know, you've always mentioned how much the job means to you and the camaraderie and all that, but, I mean, you know, if we're being honest, you make way more money in the cage. Um, I, I wonder, I mean, has any part of this, have you thought, man, I, I know I love doing this and I, I feel a duty and all that, but uh, maybe I shouldn't put my, my fighting career in jeopardy by, by still being on the front lines? I love what I do. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to sit there and run away from something I've worked hard to do. And, you know, I, I guess I always say, you know, the reason I became a you know, fighter because my life, I've been helped, you know, to get where I need to be, and, you know, I love how, you know, this is my give back, you know, I love how people, I love giving back, and, you know, that's why I teamed up with Dell also, just for his whole, you know, um, you know, uh, sync up uh, social media um, platform to give back, and it's just, uh, you know, it's all about, I'm all about giving back, man, you know, I never, I don't want anything, I just want to give back, that's all I care about. That's awesome, man. Well, give us the update on you, Steve. The the torn retina. How how are you healing? Um, how's uh, how's your health these days? Yeah, I mean, good. I mean, I, I, I you know it sucked that uh, torn retina right and I take time off. The, you know, the, uh, our doctor's like, listen, man, like you know, I'm not trying to like, tell you what to do. He's like, but you know, you gotta be smart about this, you know, because you're totally vulnerable now since you already torn it. So, uh, you know, I took my time. I got cleared in January, so I started getting back in the swing of things. Everything was going great, but then often this uh, pandemic hit, and then. Uh, I kind of put a halt, you know, my shit's been shut down, you know, I don't know when it's going to be open, hopefully it opens up soon, but that's really like the last thing to open up here in the state of Ohio, unfortunately. Yeah, no question. Are you getting any training in at all? I mean, is that a part of your routine, just, uh, you know, whether it be martial arts training or not? I'm getting here and there just as much as I can do, it just, uh, you know, it just uh, it sucks because, like, you know, I, I can only do so much in my house, you know, I have a treadmill and stuff, but, uh, you know, it's not the usual treadmill I usually run on, it sucks, and, uh, because I usually have my one is aerodynamics, so it lifts me up, it makes me a little bit lighter. And, you know, being 230 to 40 pounds takes a lot of your legs, kills you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can relate, my man. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> Francis Nergano and, uh, and Jerzinho, man, they're, they're fighting next week. I mean, I know you got busier uh, things going on and bigger things going on, but will you be tuned into that fight? Are you interested for it? And what do you think about them calling for an interim title? I mean, it's not, it doesn't sound like it's going to happen, but would you sign off on, on that being an interim title fight? I, I mean, I, I don't, I mean, listen, I, I don't care. I mean, listen, I'm not worried about any of that. You know, right now I'm just worried about what's going on in the world. You know, uh, you know, fighting's not, it's not going away. It's always going to be there, you know, but right now we're just taking rid of this thing that's going on. And, uh, 
make it up to the faith again and be able to live normal life. Yeah, no question about it. I know you've, you've said all throughout that, you know, fighting is kind of secondary, but are you eyeballing any, you know, dates on the calendar or trying to plan at all for, for when you fight again, or is it just impossible to do right now? Well, yeah. So, I mean, I mean, definitely it's not impossible. I mean, it's definitely within the calendar year, I think, but I think right now we're just, you know, I'm ready for my gym to open. I'm not going to, I want to have a full camp and make sure I'm, I'm ready to do this. I don't, I don't want to half it and go in there and be like, what if, you know, if I, if I lose, which I won't, but. Yeah, if something happens, you know, I want to make sure I'm full camp ready to go. No question about it, man. Well, we wish you the best in healing up and obviously in staying safe on the front lines. Stipe, what's uh, what's one last message you want out there, whether it be as the fighter or as the first responder? I mean, uh, what you know, it's a weird time for people, man. What do you want people to know outside of the fact that they better be drinking Modelo and, and participating in the sync up on, uh, on Cinco de Mayo? Uh, yeah, man. Uh, just thanks for everyone you know, listening and you know, being smart and, uh, you know, like, I think for everyone that's always, you know, uh, got first, first on his back, you know, like I said, you know, on Tuesday, make sure everyone, you know, take a picture of them celebrating from home. Um, we'll see you tomorrow, you know, make sure you put the hashtag sync up and, you know, but don't, don't donate the dollar back to the first responders, which is, which is amazing. So, you know, I need a little bit of help. And so thank you guys. Awesome. Steve, hey, man, much respect for, for what you do, man. Stay safe out there. I really appreciate it. And obviously we look forward to you uh, fighting again. But thanks for uh, doing what you're doing for the community for now, brother. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Be safe. All right, that was the champ, Stipe Miocic. Uh, appreciate his honesty, man. I appreciate him talking about things. Obviously, we talked, you know, more about other stuff, uh, including the Modelo sync up. I mean, all you yeah. got to do is all you got to do is Stipe O H. <laughs> Oh, he's seeing an IO from all the way for back somewhere there. out. Of, uh, just he's sitting at his house, and all of a sudden he's just like IO for some reason. <laughs> he doesn't even know why. <laughs> oh man, that uh, we'll have to talk about. It. I know that when I moved to Ohio, I'd never heard of that. It was crazy. Anyway, uh, all we gotta do is drink some Modelo on Cinco de Mayo. Uh, all right, so a couple quick things about Stipe. Uh, again, didn't talk a whole, you know, a ton about uh, his fighting because I understand where his focus is right now. But I'll tell you what's funny is. Uh, Man, uh, there's already been a story written. As we're sitting down to record this on Thursday night like we always do, I turned that audio over to the team at MMA Junkie, and Nolan King uh, busted out a little story because uh, Stipe did other interviews today. So I didn't want to like just leave that behind the scenes or whatever and allow it out there. But, dude, it is so funny how many people are just hating on him, saying that he's ducking – DC or doesn't want to fight DC and like yeah. oh my god it sickens me man like and and uh, you know I'm assuming they probably didn't even bother to read the article they definitely haven't heard the interview yet because you know it was just a written article we didn't put the audio or, in, in there or anything like that but um, I don't know it just sickens me that people would even come up with that like the dude is a firefighter you know paramedic trying to do the right thing now it's not now again it's not like he's you know in New York on the on on the on the worst you know battlefield of all yeah. this so it doesn't matter but it doesn't matter the same exactly like that dude he's making a commitment to help his community in the best way he can uh and and so I don't know it just bothers me yeah. now by the way uh in the uh, in the um you know in the essence of honesty because that's what we do here at the May Road show we're just honest mm. uh we may have stepped away a little bit longer than <laughs> that interview ran um, we started out uh, as that interview ran with the the Eureka All Haze from Latch Key Brewing, which was phenomenal. Mm. By the way, it was a uh, it's a hazy IPA. It's a single hop series. It has notes of pine resin, fresh cannabis, and citrus zest. And Unfortunately, we, no cannabis. In no, it. no, not actual cannabis. It's just it has the notes of the fresh cannabis. It did. It did. It's funny because when you said that. If you had asked me beforehand, what do you smell? What do you taste? I would weed, not have dog. said. I weed. would not have said weed. <laughs> but once you mentioned it, I was like, okay, yeah, yeah I can there. see that in there. I can see it in there. That is a tasty haze. Though. So, we, so we enjoyed that as uh, Governor Sisolak was talking, and and by the way, as we Rambling. expected, uh, yeah. you know, our we we've you know our stay at home orders have been extended a little bit. Yeah. Um, and it was interesting. Uh, I mean, this is kind of real time talk, but it was funny because before he was speaking, we were talking about the idea that like measures will be added and then subtracted and then added and subtracted. Yeah. And that's exactly what literally what he yeah. said. He's like, listen, we're going to go to a certain phase and then we're going to come back. So it's kind of yeah. funny real time stuff. But anyway, so that happened. But then we then we then we kept going and, and that was <laughs> gone. And then we got into the hatch IPA, uh, which not the pepper, not the pepper, which I had we, said in learned. the past. Oh, we've we learned. 
But I, 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 it does not have the hash pepper, but this is a West Coast IPA, 7%. And uh, the beer notes from Latchkey Brewing, this hop salad, hop salad is crisp, dry, and easy drinking with nice citrus and floral notes. I can see it is very easy drinking. Oh, this is this is probably one of the ones where I think if you would go to the brewery, you're like, all right, I want a beer I can just sip down for hours and feel like you're drinking a beer, but also feel like uh, it's not too heavy. It's not something that you're gonna like after two or three. You're like, oh, I just can't no. possibly have any more. This is a very well-rounded. The Hatch uh, IPA is because I'm not normally an IPA guy. Like yeah. I know you know because again, it's like, how it's hoppy can we make? IPA. Oh, dude, the Hatch IPA, solid. It's very very solid. Solid. All right, so I throw that out there. So anyway, we've been we've been consuming a little bit while I've been away. Now <laughs> I, I should say, by the way, if you like what you're hearing, do us a favor, please. Go to wherever you consume podcasts. From me, it's Apple Podcasts. Make sure you subscribe to us there. If you can rate us, if you can review us, I appreciate that because that helps us get the word out. But wherever you go, uh, just know that we appreciate it. If you do it on Apple iTunes, though, uh, or excuse me, Apple Podcasts. Apple Podcasts. Podcasts. I, it still bothers me. It's been years. It's yeah, Anyway, Apple Podcasts. Do it there. I promise I will read your review out to us. It would mean a lot to us. But if you want to take your game to the next level, go to patreon.com slash the MMA Roadshow. For there, for as little as $3 a month, you can consume all of our content, including the and a half episodes that will be returning. The exclusive spot of the and a half. That will be the exclusive home of it. And they will be returning next week with UFC 249. Uh, and I, look, I, I, I dropped a little bit of uh, extra content on there. We, we've been we've been trying to drop a little bit of extra stuff in there in the meantime, but those and a half episodes will be there. Uh, shout out to Zachary Humphrey, by the way, who, who joined this week. Uh, okay. As we as we told everybody, we understand that right now these trying financial times. If you're not able to stay on there uh we as a patreon we supporter it. we totally get it man we totally totally get it. i've been moving bills around and thinking about you know what i need to subscribe to and what i don't so i totally get it but if you, you can totally go to the strip clubs much less than you way used less to. than i used to way less because they're not open uh <laughs> otherwise i would be there uh but shout out to but zachary now Humphrey. that zachary's on board you can go back and give one lucky lady hey some money I'm, I, look i'm just i'm just paying it forward i'm <laughs> paying it forward, forward. Uh, all right, quickly, I want to say we didn't really talk about it last week. I, I'll, I'll admit it, I was off my game last week, man. I was having a rough week last week. I was off my game, so I apologize to everybody. But um, if you did not watch Craig Jones versus Vinny Magalesh at Submission Underground 13, check it out. It's on USC Fight Pass. Check it out. It is a crazy match. Two of the best grapplers in the world. I was I was trying to explain to my wife like where they are level wise. I would say at worst, if you were saying at worst, you would say they were two of the top five. And that would be, like, conservative speak. I mean, they're two of the best grapplers on the planet. And I won't – well, I guess that's not really spoiling anything. It happened several days ago. But uh, Vinny Magalesh ended up suffering a, a pretty bad injury, what looked like um, either a, a dislocated ankle or a twisted Ouch. knee or whatever. It turns – maybe he had a spiral fracture of his tibula. It's the weirdest match ever. Two of the best grapplers – Craig Jones is sick. His leg lock game is just nasty, and this is why his everything jujitsu. Oh, his everything is, is nasty, but his <laughs> leg locks are nasty, and it's why it's so hard for MMA to cross over against the very best. Like when we watch, um, you know, the grappling because I love grappling, but when you watch the grappling only events, I love seeing the MMA guys in there, but only against each other. Because if you're if you're grappling only, you're you're you're, you're focusing on totally different things, and you're doing totally different, you know, a, a totally different skill set. And he ends up getting uh, Vinny in a heel hook, and he turns it over. And you see, like, basically Vinny's foot ends up turned the exact opposite way it should be, um, but he doesn't tap. And to, to Craig Jones' credit, so they start having this weird thing. And, again, it's in this environment where, you know, we've got reduced staff, there's no crowd, there's reduced cameramen, there's all this. And, and, and the mic, uh, the microphone situation, like you, they're talking to each other, but you can't really hear the audio 100% as you watch the replay on UFC Fight Pass. But they're talking to each other. And, and you can, I mean, in, in retrospect, you can kind of understand what happened. But basically, Craig Jones deserves all the credit in the world for being a gentleman. He's, he basically keeps asking Vinny, like, are you sure you're okay? Like, dude, I promise you, like, I just destroyed your leg. Are you sure you're okay? And Vinny, to his credit, is a tough son of a bitch. He's like, it's already, it's already screwed up now. Like, let's just keep going. Uh, you know what I mean? So, like, ouch. dude, it's crazy, man. He, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a very bizarre grappling match. 
But, man, it shows how skilled these guys are, and it shows the qualities and traits of them. It's worth watching. Craig Jones is, A, a dangerous, dangerous dude, uh, but also an incredibly nice dude that keeps asking Odor. Like, he goes to heel hook the same foot, and he kind of lets it go. He's like, uh, you know what? No, I don't. You, you know what I mean? He's like, I already know I destroyed it. Like, uh, He's I'm, like, I'm, you might not realize it, but yeah. this this foot is So gone. you see what a gentleman he is and how awesome he is, but then you also see how durable Vinny is as a guy where, like, his leg has just been destroyed, and he's like, nah, let's go. Like, Craig keeps asking him, are you okay? Are you okay? He's like, yeah. Let's do this. Let's go. So yeah. it's it's worth watching, man. It's it's uh it's crazy. So it, it reminds me that uh, when we were lucky enough to get uh, to go cover quintet oh, here yeah, in town. Yeah, yeah. So they had uh, Cynthia Calvillo uh, wrestled or grappled against Daniel Kelly, who had not been grappling, I guess, for that long. But that was her main function, and she's like a little prodigy in in what yes. she's been able to do, and she just dismantled Cynthia and Cynthia is super tough and she's one of the ones when I know when I break down or when I think about fights that she's going into I it's her jujitsu that helps carry the day in a lot of her fights so to have her go into one of these submission fights uh submission matches yeah. against a pure submission fighter you grappler, see the levels you, you see, see the, the difference of the levels because Danielle is is not even I don't mean she's got on tapology, she has one, two, even I maybe even just one other professional one besides Cynthia. But you would never think that when you Aww. watch because of the difference was just it was just unbelievable. And, it's, and again, it's, it's almost like you know Connor going to box Floyd Mayweather. Like you knew, like come on, That's there's a no perfect way of there's it no up. chance now. Yeah. If if Danielle had come to fought an MMA fight against Cynthia, she'd get destroyed. Cynthia would just smash. Destroy in the same way that if Floyd fought Connor in an MMA match, he'd get destroyed. Yeah. You know, so that's that's why I I love these grappling matches, but I hate the crossover. Like anytime yeah. I see hey so and so from the, like I love seeing so and so from the MMA world against so and so from the MMA world like or doing yeah. a grappling match. I love that. That's fun. But when it's so and so from the MMA world is going against you know Craig Jones, Gordon Ryan, yeah. Vinny Magalesh, even to that point, are, it's just like, mm. oh man, Craig and Gordon are just on another level, like different level. I don't, I don't watch that sport. Uh, I'm not, uh, I, I don't watch it to the point where I could name names. But those are two names that I know, and every time I've seen them compete, it's just, it's, it's a whole different level. Those guys are literally. Uh, in the anime world, they would be Super Saiyans. They are yep. uh, completely above the board. I mean, kudos on Vinny. I mean, Vinny is a super tough guy. But I mean, to be even be able to get in there and compete, it's underrated for people to, to for him to be able to compete at that level. It's it's unbelievable. Um, oh, he's legit, man. He, he's. He, I mean, that you'd have to be legit to be competing with those kind of he's, guys. He's an absolute badass. Uh, all right, another another story I want to talk about real quickly. Uh, Rob Whitaker, man. Rob Whitaker uh, came out and uh, talked about his burnout. There was a story uh, in the uh, in the media down there in, in Australia where he talked about just how mentally taxing the sport was, and that um, you know he was burned out. And and I've seen he was I, tired of taking your interviews. Yes, he was like John he Morgan could go to hell. He's like John Morgan done burnt me the I'm, f I'm, out. I'm done. I can't <laughs> I can't reap anymore for that guy. No, he <laughs> now you know uh, here here's the thing is that. Um, I do love this, man, and I feel like uh, I know a lot of people have been giving uh, Darren Till credit for this lately, and I think he was he was a very open. Honest. It does seem like a lot of a lot of people are being, and maybe it's just this kind of shift in society to like talk more openly about mental health and that sort of thing. But I'll be honest with you, this is one reason I have always loved covering the sport so much and and dealing with these athletes so much because that to me is the reality of this is that like what Robert Whitaker said is not unique to Robert Whitaker. Like, dude, right. it is everybody like in order to be great at this sport you you almost have to be uh imbalanced like you know what i mean like you you a perfectly normal person that has a perfectly normal uh family life and and, and well-rounded like they're not going to be great at this sport and that's that's one thing that disappoints me sometime about the way people talk about the athletes in the sport and look at the athletes again just like people saying steep a's duck in dc like that's just stupid like that's definitely not what's happening people so and so's afraid of so and so no they're not no they're not that's ridiculous and i don't know i just i, I thought this was just another example of 
what people need to understand about the athletes in the sport, man. Like, in order to be great at this, man, you can't have a balanced life. You have to sacrifice everything: your yeah. family, your 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 meals, your your frosty beverages. Your I mean, everything gets changed. And, um, so we can never be these high level. Absolutely not. <laughs> Just in case you were worried, that's why I say, like, I, there was a point in my life where I really considered, and then I was like, nah, nah. I no. I always say, uh, Yoel <laughs> Romero is one year older than me, so I always know I have one year to look like Yoel <laughs> Romero. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> at whatever age Yoel is, there I have is. one year to look like that. But no, um, but no, I, I, I just to me. I, I love that, and, and it kind of reminded me, and it didn't remind me, but I just wanted to use an example of, like, why I love covering these athletes so much. It's just, like, they're special human beings, man, like, and, and, and I think they deserve to be treated that way. And now, like, the way the game is now, like, not only do you have to sacrifice everything to be this phenomenal physical athlete – but now you have to be an entertainer too. You know, yeah. you gotta have, you gotta have. You it's gotta not have enough just media. to be on top of your game. That's right. You can't just be a yeah. great. Because what did we always criticize Robert Whitaker for? Like, hey man, he's a great athlete, but man, he doesn't do enough social media. He doesn't do enough interviews. He doesn't yeah. do enough this and that. And it turns out he's like, yeah, because I just want to be at home with my family and my wife, and my kids, and yeah. I want to do that. And it, it, I mean, we used to talk about it like. Not criticism, but just like saying, like, man, is he's missing out, and he did. He missed out on opportunities. Jose Aldo, a guy that we criticized, not criticized, but again, along the way, said, look, he missed out on opportunities. Had he had he focused more on learning English? Had he focused more on? And that's on, so bad. But it, but it, 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 it but it it's so true. But it's how true, shitty but it's is bad. it? It's like when it's like, oh, if he just would have learned English instead of spending time with his family and enjoying his life outside of the cage. That's what I'm saying. That, you know? That's what I'm saying. It's, it's how can you not burn out with the expectation? to try to better all the other stuff. You're, yes. you're, I mean, you're completely right. I mean, when you think about uh, even just a, a normal, uh, whatever, take away, scratch normal, just a person that wants to do business, mm -hmm. wants to be the best stock trader, stock whatever, you know, you focus on your job and you focus so much and probably at some point in there, your your personal life will falter. Absolutely, you know. So if I you're think great at anything, something has something got to give. else in your life suffers. Has There's got no to question give. about. There's right. No question about. Right. So I mean, for these athletes to reach such a high level, you know, something's got to give. And here we are, like trying to squeeze, you know, water from a rock. Like, give us more. Give us more. Even though we should really think into the fact of what they're already giving us is already such a hard thing at a high level. Uh, to, but we want it because, unfortunately, it is an entertainment field. We're like, no, you must because that's what we want, you know. But that is what is so outrageous about the, the, the ones that do it at such a high level that are so good at social media, so good at promoting themselves, but also so good to be at such a high level. That's why they're freaks of nature. They're, I mean, they're literally unicorns walking the earth because they're able to do magic. And, and because most of us as mortal beings can can barely do the one, let alone do some of the other. And I think that's what's so fascinating about a lot of these individu individuals that we're lucky enough to cover day by day is because they do excel on the physical aspects. They do excel on the disciplines it takes to become a technical good fighter. But then a lot of them are just absolutely fantastic actors in front of the screens. You right. know, we expect him to. We're gonna point this camera at you and go, and they just turn it yeah. on, and that is not. Be it. chill, son. Yeah. Be Conor McGregor. Yeah. Be like nobody can like. It's not easy for them to do that. So the fact that they are able to do it, or even to do it to some degree, is is to their credit and should be commended. I mean, and it it is such a fascinating sport and such a fascinating field that we're able to cover that we are able to. Uh, interact with these people that even the ones that are not the greatest are still doing it better than most people on a given day are when it comes to live your life. You could be the best mother effing Arby's delivery driver guy or delivery guy, but you're not asked to then, okay, work your shift and then go go answer questions in front because most people can't even handle that. So the fact that they can do their job, do their job at a high level and uh, you know, be expected to do something else. Burnout is only to be expected at this high level. Burnout happens at any level. I think just working five days a week, who doesn't by Friday just feel like, oh, my Lord, I'm done. Thank 
Yeah, if it, if sport, it wasn't a thing, they wouldn't say, thank goodness and it's And this Friday. sport is 24-7. And this sport literally, you're right, is 24-7. It never ends. First of all, let's let's just commend your uh, restraint there. Mother effing was amazing. I'm working on it. R- fantastic <laughs> restraint there. Doing well in the quarantine. But you're right. And, and I think that's the way – That's I guess that's the reason – the chief reason I wanted to bring this up is because for anybody that heard Robert Whitaker's comments or read the stories or whatever, like, please understand, man – that guy is speaking for the sport, man. That guy is speaking for everybody. He is not speaking for himself individually. That is more commonplace than I think anybody can realize. The, 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 the physical strains that are on the athletes in the sport is insane. Yeah. The mental strains on top of that are insane. Then you add in the mental strains that are added because of the social media aspect of the sport. Yeah. It's, 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 I mean, if you took social and then media add away. the fact that he's a father. Oh, dude, with a life just, outside of it. I mean, uh, it's just it's unreal. It's it's uh, it's just, it's unreal, man. So just uh, hopefully, like most listeners of this show already have that respect. But if you didn't, just reconsider that, man. Think about that. Like what Rob Whitaker is saying, man. He is not speaking only for himself, man. He's speaking for uh, everybody, and, and it is cool to hear. You know, people like Darren Till, people like Donald Cerrone. Uh, you know, I was be gonna say, more uh, before you even said it, I was gonna say who's if you had to just think back quickly. Everybody listening to this and you. Think back to a fighter that has opened up that you're just like, wow. What's the name that comes off first off the top of your list? If I just said, pick a name of somebody that said a moment that you were like, oh, okay, I get it. For me, I mean, I always love Cowboys openness. I mean, Darren Till's, Darren Till's, like, he's been incredibly open. Cowboy has been open forever. Like Cowboy talking. was the first, yeah. probably one of the first for me. I think Cowboy's I was one like, of the first that talked about it. Like that really the openly back. talked about it. He needs to get more credit for that because I think he opened up a way to – from people to understand that they could – you can say that you're afraid. You can say that this is stressful. You could say that this sucks. And you've already given me enough that how could I ever be like, well, that's not good enough anymore. You know, with that's what it. these guys have already paid for, it, and especially even with, like, Robert Whitaker, you've already paid it forward. You've already paid your dues. I mean, like, if you want to take a day off, you want to take some time off because you're having mental days – Brother, you get your mental days because yep. you've already you've already paid it forward. I mean, if somebody wants to come in the game, like, oh, you know, I just I just came in, you know, I, I'm I'm getting fast tracked or whatever. And says, oh, this is just too much. Like, I don't want to hear it. Like, but these grizzled vets, these people that are doing it, um, dude, I have all the credit. But yeah, Cowboy stands out to me for one of the first ones that when I think back to, and I I love hearing Diego talk about stuff now. And I mean, I love all these fighters. I mean. I think anything, when you you think about a good TV show, you think about any good movie you want, it's about characters. It's about the That's character it. arc. You, you understand the struggle and the strife and the overcoming of, of, of challenges that have been put in their lives. And I love the fact that these, these fighters who, um, with, re, with good reason, are put on a pedestal for being, one, physical specimens, two, being able to overcome fear, three, being able to go in there and just do these what seems like non-human feats of 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 skill and then to on the the backside be human Dude. and be uh uh sensitive and be uh just human i do i'm t- it's, it's, it's unreal it, I, i'm getting excited as you talk about that man because honestly like that is bringing me back to the reason why i love the sport so much man like and it frustrates me because Everything now is so much about the biggest headline, the most controversial thing, the biggest beef, and that's whatever. Who's talking the most shit? Who's talking the most shit? Dude, to me, like, I've always said, I I remember having this conversation with Dan Stupp way back in the day, like, saying, like, man, I envision a day where MMA Junkie has 24 stories ahead of every UFC card because it's one story on every UFC fighter because every one of them has a story, story, bro. Every one of them is making sacrifices is like their life is changing their you know every i mean dude like what these people do and again like i'm not and, and when i say that i'm not trying to be fanboy right here like hopefully i've got enough time in the sport that people realize no i'm a real journalist as well like i i'm gonna cover the stories but when we talk about the athletes themselves i think they deserve a little bit of reverence man yeah. i think they deserve a little bit of respect and the understanding that can we can we shy away from just getting the most clickiest headline at some time and just zero in on the fact that like a Robert Whitaker man these people are literally i mean sacrificing parts of themselves and parts of their lives 
for our entertainment, man. And I, and I don't know. I, I, for that, I think they deserve some respect. And, again, uh, that doesn't mean you have to lie for them or you have to uh, pretend they don't have faults. But right. at the same time, like, if you can tell their story, man, tell their story. Give them – Give them that moment in the spotlight. Yeah, and, and and it's worthwhile to put these individuals on pedestals for what they what they do physically, what they do everything because not of a not all of us can do this. A, a very few fraction of us could do anything close to it. But I love the idea of humanizing and and understanding the stripe because I think if you look at most of the people listening to this and most of the people that read and most of the people that follow the MMA, everybody deals with their their own personal issues, their own strifes, their own challenges. But what's wonderful about this is that we all gather around this most uh, basic sort of function. We always say it's it's primal, this need to challenge one another, you know, to to act and put yourself at the personal best. You need to be your best to, to best a challenger at this point, to to come out on top. And, and that follows through so much in life of – whether it be at work or whatever, you want to be the best guy. You want to be the the salesman of the of the month. You want to be the 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 employee of the month. You know, everybody wants to strive, and I think that's what drives a lot of people to watch some of the sport is the fact of seeing people push themselves to the limit. And there's something wonderful about mm. finding out that while these people are at the top of the game and while they are doing what seems to be inhuman things, they are still human and we still can relate mm-hmm. because we all deal with these issues. And and that's why I tell people, I'm like, it's so funny. Like you, you cover the sport and some people think, that, oh, the sport's violent, the sport's whatever. I'll tell you what, covering this sport, even dealing with other media issue, media people, Everybody's nice to each other. Everybody understands what we're trying to do. The fans are so fervent and, and love the sport. They love their people. And I love what's amazing and fun to me covering the sport outside of the, the, the fight action. I love everything that's on the, the periphery of this sport. I love the fans. I love them getting into it. I love the being in the arena, seeing everybody getting caught up in the emotion of the fight because everybody's – has a, their own story of what it, they had to work that day. You know, they had to take off time to go to this event. You know, some people get dressed up. Some people just get just get beard up, you know, and they, and they get loose. You know, they want to <laughs> release, you know. But when we all get together and everybody's watching this fight and everybody's interacting, there's just such a wonderful bond of just people being people and people being human nature that is so uh fun and i just love that our sport and and covering the sport that at times some of that just human side of it comes out of it because it can't always be about you know uh who is you know this i mean i love the the fact of you know guys coming in on a street guys coming in you know, after, you know, 14 submissions in a row, that's great. And that's fine and dandy, you know, but knowing that, you know, you know, even me as not a parent, you know, knowing that somebody this past year had a kid, but then, you know, went straight back into fighting, you know, trained for six months, got a nice quick victory back to training. His family's doing well. And he has another fight and he has another chance to provide. Like to me, I'm like, that sounds more interesting to me. And I love the fact that, this sport more than NFL, more than MLB, more than NBA, any of the other stuff, like I don't think you can connect with the players in the game like you can with MMA because MMA is just much more, in my eyes, much more real because it just seems real. Like when I watch these overplayed athletes who are fantastic in what they do, whether it be the NFL or baseball or whatever, those are fantastic sports. We're lucky to have like real people in in MMA that are experienced. I just feel like they're more human. I think that's why MMA fans are so much more attached to their fighters and the sport because they're more like us because it's just, I don't know. I hate to use the, the cliche, it's more primal, but it is more us, but... I don't know. Man, that 10% beer is still <laughs> kicking. I it is not. still kicking. But I feel like I'm just rambling. I'm getting all emotional about know, MMA, but, but maybe, it's, it's, maybe it's because we're getting it's closer. The time it's away. back that we're getting now close we're to it. It's good. All right, listen, let's do this real quick. Uh, listen, I had a chance to talk to Dan Ige uh, this week, and I wanted, to, I wanted to share that as well because I, I wanted to remind people that, um, yes, UFC 249 is popping up. 
but there's two other cards right after that. So we're going to be down there Unreal. for a stretch. Unreal. And uh, he's facing Edson Barbosa, which Edson Bar – I mean, I love Dan Ige. He's a Vegas guy. Uh, he's been on here a couple times, man, and, and obviously he has a great story. Uh, but Edson Barbosa, man, uh, uh, dude – Dangerous as hell. Now Barbista. dropping down to feather. Oh my god, he's a beast, dude. Now he's dropping down to featherweight, um, and and they're doing this. Uh, man, good stuff, dude. Uh, so uh, yeah, dude, I'm I'm not I'm I'm excited about the emotion because that's 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 what I'm feeling. I'm, I'm trying to get excited again, and you're getting excited again. Thanks to Last Key Brewing, we're both getting excited <laughs> again. Shout out to Anthony Beach, we're both getting excited Woo! again. We haven't even finished the care package yet. No, oh, oh, there's no way we'll finish the whole care package, but we'll. Well, I mean, we we'll, could keep working. Well, at maybe, it. We'll, maybe we will. Maybe we will. All right. In the meantime, we'll make that decision. Here's uh, here's Dan Ige. All right, it's the man himself, 50K, Dan Ige. Always good to talk to you, brother. We're uh, we're both here in Las Vegas, but of course, we're all doing our social distancing and all that good stuff. Where, where are you right now, man? It looks like you're in some kind of dungeon facility. I am in the dungeon. Um, right now, I'm, uh, I just got done with the training session with my coach, Eric Nixick. We worked some technique with him and Randy Couture. I have a small group of guys. We've uh, just been getting after him, man. Um, obviously, we have to take the precautionary measures due to the circumstances, but you know, we're, we're kind of just going bubble to bubble right now. We have a safe group of guys that we trust, and um, so we're still able to put in that work and get after it. That's awesome, man. Well, you caught my attention earlier this week, man. You went to social media and you say everybody wants to be a BMF until until they have to do what BMFers do. I'm assuming that that means taking a fight with Edson Barbosa on short notice and getting ready during a pandemic. Is that is that what was going through your head when you when you posted that? Definitely. You know, I mean, not only that because you, you see a lot of people tweeting like, "Oh, I want to fight. I want to fight. I'll fight anybody, anywhere, anytime, anyway." But man, when they actually send that contract, are you going to sign that thing? And um, yeah, so I, I got the offer to fight Edson Barboza, um, officially signed the contract today. I'm pretty pumped about it. You know, he's coming down to 145 to my division, but um, I'm ready. I, I feel good. I train, I, I train all the time. I've been, um, I pretty much never got out of camp ever since my fight. It maybe took two, two weeks off, went home, relaxed a while, but straight into camp helping Khabib get ready uh, for his fight April 18th, which fell out, obviously. Um, and then the whole quarantine process happened. But, you know, I stayed ready. I stayed healthy, stayed in shape. I was working out. Didn't really have the idea of fighting. But when the opportunity came along, I was super pumped, and I jumped on it right away. So, you know, obviously all fighters are dealing with this. I mean, around the world, everybody's kind of in similar circumstances. But I guess we've been trying to figure out what's the hardest part, right? Because you, you can work out. You can stay in shape. But – can you stay in fight shape? And as, as far as preparation goes, I mean, is it is it just the cardio that's the issue? Or, you know, we're wondering, you know, can you really get enough grappling to feel good? Or, you know, is striking, you know, are you just hitting mitts? I mean, what's, what do you think the biggest challenge is given the circumstances that everybody's facing in terms of fight preparation? Um, It's definitely tricky, you know, because it's hard to find a, a group of people you can trust because you don't know – you can, you know where – you know, I could control my circumstances and what I'm doing and the people I'm around, but you don't, it's hard to control every single person. And, uh, but no, there's, there's no concern about getting in shape, um, with this crisis going on, obviously. But I think for a lot of people, it's going to be mentally, like mentally, am I doing the right thing? Am I, because I'm not grinding with the team every single day, am I going to be in shape? But for me, I feel almost better because everything's, around me everything's focused around me and my camp this is my training camp and i that's what a lot of boxers do um they isolate themselves and they have a few you know four or five sparring partners that they can get their work in so i'm getting my work in every single day um i'm pushing myself to the limit i feel great uh i'm stronger than ever i'm lean and uh, i'm ready to go out there and put on a dominant performance Nice, man. You've got the nice run going. I know you wanted, um, you know, a top-ranked guy. It's not technically a top-ranked guy because he's moving to your division, right? But, I mean, obviously he's yeah. been around forever, man. He's got the reputation. So, it, I don't know, it's kind of a wild-card matchup, right? You know what I mean? So, when they came to you with this name, I'm sure it wasn't one that you were expecting. What what, what were your initial thoughts? Well, I, I in a way, I, I did expect it because I, you know, I analyzed everyone, every potential opponent, ranked or not ranked. I and, I and I knew Edson was dropping to 145, so he was on my radar as far as uh, a potential opponent. But you know, I, I didn't know it would be now. 
So I, I, I was super excited. Obviously, he's not a ranked guy. But that's the thing with the rankings. So many guys, especially uh, to hit that top 10, they don't want to fight 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. They don't want to fight the guys under them. They only want to fight the guys above, and it goes for everybody. So for me, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm taking a risk to give up my ranking, but I'm fighting a legend. In order to be a legend, you have to beat the legends. And um, this is the type of guy I have to beat in order to be a champion. Yeah, no question about it. Any any concerns? I mean, obviously, Edson's a professional, been around for a long time, but um, a guy dropping weight classes in the middle of this pandemic where we know training is tough and preparation yeah. is tough. Did that present any concern to you at all? Like, man, what if this guy, you know, shows up and he's 148, you know? Yeah, uh, we, we we definitely talked about him, my coach and I. And, um, you know, yeah, that sure, that's a concern, but – I, I can't be focused on what he's doing. I still have to cut weight. I have to make 145 in a pandemic. So, um, you know, that's that's a factor too. So I'm definitely um, dialed in on my nutrition, dialed in on my training, doing everything possible that I can control. I don't know what, what he's doing. I, he may come in overweight. Um, I'm going to get that percentage, but <laughs> uh, yeah. Take it like a manager there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I can't worry about about what he's doing or how he's preparing. No question. Talk about the fight environment. I mean, uh, obviously, look, it's probably going to be like this way for a while where there's no crowd around. It's probably isn't going to be yeah. just a one-time thing. So ha does that factor in at all? I mean, have you talked about that with your team, your coaches? I mean, I, I, you know, I've never been in a, in a cage fight in front of thousands of people. I, I hear yeah. a lot of guys say, listen, man, once the door is locked, all I hear is my coaches anyway. But does yeah. it? Does it? do you anticipate it providing – you know, any impact on what your adrenaline level is like or what your anticipation level is like, like not having the crowd around? Uh, so, yeah, definitely. There's a lot of there's a lot of different ways you can look at it. Um, it is different. You know, I, I, I fought in front of, you know, minimal fans, of course, on the contender series. It was a little different. Had, a, you know, a few of my family members and training partners there, obviously rooting, supporting. But um, it, 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 it'll be different for sure. You're going to hear everything. Um just from actually watching the fight uh, they had in Brazil, you can hear the guys breathing, and that that's weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, no, I'm prepared. Um, I'm definitely – it'll be nice. You know, I, I'll be able to hear everything. I'll be able to hear my coaches. I'll be able to hear my opponents uh, breathing. That's, that's big, you know, and I'll feed off that. If he takes a deep breath, I know he's getting tired, and I'm going to push him. Um, but same, same for him. You know, he's going to – if he wants to land one of his big kicks, every, the judges are going to hear that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, I, I, it doesn't matter uh, if I'm fighting in front of one person or a million people. Um, you know, everyone will be tuning in on TV, and I have to find that inner motivation to come out and bring it how I always do. I dig it, man. Well, as you said, I mean, I know you're an analytical guy that studies everything, thinks, plans, all that. I mean, Obviously, everything was disrupted, but it looks like we're going to be back to business. And uh, it looks like there's going to be a lot of cards, right? Because the UFC is saying we're going to get 42 events in. We're you know we're going to we're going to fill it up. So I'm assuming there's going to be a lot of fights coming up. What's yeah. what's your plan, Dan? I mean, is this do you see yourself trying to capitalize with like multiple uh, appearances? I mean, you've got this nice run together. I know you're trying to make a big impact. So what's now that you're kind of recalibrated and redialed in? What's what's the plan for this year? Yeah, so um, the plan is, you know, it remains the same. Uh, my Before all of this happened in 2020, my goal was to fight three to four times this year. And I will fight three to four times this year. But obviously, I have a very tough test in front of me. You know, no, we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, we can only prepare and assume what's going to happen. But, you know, you have to prepare for the best. You have to prepare for the worst. So, you know, right now my main and major focus is this fight May 16th against Edson. Um, but I, I do see myself uh, staying active this year and and eventually making my run, you know, towards the top, towards that title. So I have to beat Edson first to even talk about any future fights. And uh, that's the main focus and the main goal. No doubt. Well, listen, I mean, with your two styles, I don't see any reason that uh, this fight will disappoint, man. It seems like it's going to be exciting. So let me ask you. Uh, where does the 50k come from, man? Is this a is this a 50k performance of the night, or is this a 50k fight of the night? Uh, yeah. I, I want the performance definitely. Um, people, even my last fight, everyone was telling me, "Oh, fight of the night, fight of the night, fight of the night," and I was like, "Man, you guys are disrespectful. You're giving this guy a chance. I'm gonna go out there and make it a performance, and that's what I want. You know, fight of the night is nice, 
you know, give the fans a, a fun fight to watch. But, you know, this is a greedy sport, and um, I want the bonus. I don't want to share the bonus. I want the bonus. So, you know, I'm, I'll be looking for a performance of the night. And uh, don't get me wrong, Edson's extremely talented, extremely a world-class opponent, you know. I'm sure he's going to be looking for the same thing, looking for a nice knockout. But, um, you know, it's going to be whoever gets it first will get that performance for sure. No doubt, no doubt. All right, Dan, well, I won't hold you any longer, let you get back to it, man. I know you got a lot of preparation to squeeze into a little bit of time, so I'll just say yeah. uh, best of luck, and uh, I, I imagine you're excited to, the same way we are to get back to live fights. Heck yeah, most definitely. want to give uh, want to give the people some hope in the world and uh, show that, you know, we can still go out there and do positive things and, you know, get better. All right, so that was 50K Dan Ige, man. I just always love talking to that guy, man. I I, I love his personality, man. I love the the way he, uh, I don't know, approaches the game and uh, just just enjoy talking to him. So, uh, uh, yeah, remember, it's not just UFC 249. There's there's two other cards right after that. Uh, so it, it should be a uh, a busy week in Florida, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting down there and actually covering fights again. All right, uh, speed round real quick because uh -oh. we're, we're, talking, we're talking a lot. The, the we're talking a lot, we're drinking a lot. The latch key brewing got to us. By the way, I should say that we've moved on to the doppeldecker. It is a seven point seven point two percent. It's a a doppelbock. It's rich. It has deep maltiness, caramel toastiness, and a deep red brown and it's color. Dacker, not backer. And yeah. a soft finish. It is delicious. Six point five percent. Latch key brewing is the best. I'm Dude, I I wish if if I was in San Diego or even here, I feel like in town. I wish I maybe I should go to some of these local breweries that are still sort of doing because we must support. It's so funny. It's, I no, saw I get it, but you're gonna assume that other local breweries would be good. No, I no disrespect to other local breweries. Anthony Beach is a monster, bro. Yeah. He, like, dude, think about it. Yeah. All yep. these recipes. Yes, in San Diego, this is the only our, brewery you should our go check MMA, out. Our hardcore MMA fan comes up with all these, dude. He writes these recipes. He brews these. He grabs the ingredients. He throws them in the thing. He, he ferments it. Like, think about that. What a badass he, sleeps he is. He sleeps right next to the tin, the bu the bucket, and he's like, oh, I don't know about become that. A, <laughs> become a happy beer for me. I don't know about and that. And he hugs it, and he gives it kisses at night. I don't know about that. But right. you're right. As for as for if you're in San Diego, you need to go to this brewery. But it did make me think about some of the local. And business, if you're not in San Diego, breweries. you need to drive to San Diego <laughs> and fly to San Diego. <laughs> Support your local non-local breweries. Support San Diego. <laughs> Support local San Diego. businesses. Because there's there's some actually some businesses here in town that are doing some of the the local beer things, but we do need to support your uh, your local businesses. If you're comfortable leaving the house, put your face mask face mask on and uh, go support your local businesses that are open. Your local breweries for sure. I love it. Put your face mask on and come on down. Put your face mask on and come get some. Uh, all right, uh, all right. Speed round. Stephen A. Smith. Vindicated or not? Did you see this? Because Cowboy came out, did an interview with ESPN. He said, uh, I wasn't there that night. I didn't show up that night. Uh, and then Stephen A. Smith came out and said, told you. I said he didn't show up that night. I was right. You were wrong. All you guys that came at me. Nah. You, you know, I, He's still a bitch. <laughs> All right, so, so all right, so here's what I say. Well, that's just my own personal feelings because I think Steve I did say Smith's speed a bitch. round. I didn't mean for you to make it that speedy, but I will yeah. say speed <laughs> round. You, that was the speediest round of all. I will say, uh, I, I I agree with you. I agree with you. Stephen A. Smith was right almost accidentally, uh, and I don't I don't mean disrespect him. I'm not trying to come at Stephen A. Smith. I'm not trying to disrespect him, but Cowboy he was Stephen A. Smith. Stop it, stop it. That's the, that's definitely the temperature. He deserves talking. it. He deserves it right in the eyeball. <laughs> What I'm saying is that I think Stephen A. Smith was only because Stephen A. Smith hasn't watched multiple Cowboy fights. He hasn't watched multiple. Yeah. You know, he he was talking about what he saw in that you know 40 seconds or what have you. Uh, and 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 but you know what Cowboy is talking about when he admitted that I didn't want to be there that I, I you know was talking about all the stuff that we just talked about, all the human aspect of life, everything that we talked about that goes into a fight. You know what I mean? I, and I think Stephen A. Smith was commenting on those 40 seconds, and Cowboy is talking about the 40 days right. beforehand. You know what I mean? So, like, it frustrates me because, you know, Stephen A. Smith is now – and again, I have nothing against Stephen A. Smith, but now he's, like, putting his hand in the air and be like, 
told you. Just yeah. saying, I told you. And I think that's wrong. I think that's wrong. I understand he kind of – he said – Cowboy didn't show up. Cowboy said, I didn't show up. So on the surface, you can say, yeah, Stephen A. Smith nailed it. I think it's wrong. I, I think they're talking about two different aspects of the fight, yeah. if that makes sense. I'm like four weight classes above Stephen A. Smith. But if there was another journalist where I had to say, like, okay, you have eight months to drop weight and get to a medium weight class – Stephen A. Smith is the person I would be willing to go. Oh, in you there. would do it, huh? I, if he would come in there and beat my ass, good on you, Stephen A. Smith. But I would love to, for all of America, be able to take one good fucking swing at <laughs> Stephen A. Smith. So Stephen A. Smith, I know you listen to this podcast all the time. He doesn't listen to this podcast. All no, bro. He's a but uh, I would be willing to Patreon. do whatever the fuck it MMA took Rocha. to drop weight to meet. Uh, well, I couldn't never go lightweight, weather welterweight, light heavyweight. <laughs> Can we do a super heavyweight? If you can meet me at 260. But, but if you can meet me at 265, <laughs> god darn it, I would try my best. That is one dude where uh, uh, I appreciate what he has been able to do for himself. But, man, he takes some hot takes that just makes you want to punch him in the face. And if there was ever another journalist where uh, – I don't consider myself a journalist. If there was ever another person that working in the media field that I could – friggin' get in there and take a swing at, that is one individual. All right, I hesitate to bring this up. Uh, it's all our, good if it's not Stephen A. Smith. Given our good. current state. Uh, <laughs> but should we do speed round on uh, Pearl Gonzalez? Curtis Blades oh, and Pearl Gonzalez. Boy, right. this is not a winning – there's no way to win all right. in this discussion. See, that's – I know. That's the thing is I'm, I'm hesitant to jump into this because obviously – Curtis Blades and Pro Gonzalez had a little backup on social media, uh, or backup, a back and forth, I should say, on social media. I don't think they'll be fighting each other anytime soon, so it's not a pre-fight hype. Yeah. Uh, it's just a difference of opinion. Uh, Curtis Blades uh, admitted uh, his frustration or, 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 or talked about his frustration of uh, female athletes presenting themselves as – uh, sexual beings, I guess, or, put, or putting themselves out there. One in their cake and it too. They want to be be seen as being professional athletes, but whatever. Then but they also, also not to... be viewed uh, or not over sexualized or what have yeah. you. Um, man, I, I I'll be honest with you, man. I, I, the I, the only reason I say I hesitate to bring this up is there's just not there's there's not a winning argument in this. Like, yeah, I understand that Curtis's point, like. Don't pres don't put yourself in a sexual fashion and then say, oh, it, it pisses me off that I'm being portrayed sexually. But at the same time, like, I mean, that's this game. Like, like again, we're we're going back and talking about. It. We've been talking about the whole episode. Is that yeah. like, look, this game is not about just wins and losses. It's not yeah. enough to go out there and just fight. You know, if it was enough to just go fight and get wins, and if you get wins, that means you move forward like a like a tournament or a season or a whatever, Like, and now you're the best ever, and now you get paid that way. No, that's not the way it works, man. Yeah. I mean, you have to get yourself noticed. You have to get yourself uh, on people's radar, right or wrong, because you're a good fighter or not, because you're, um, you know, like I'll say, CM Punk. CM Punk is my broadcast partner at CFFC, so I, I definitely won't take shots at him. I love that guy. I liked him from the first time I met him. I have never seen one wrestling match of CF, uh, CFFC. I've never seen one, one wrestling match of CM Punk in my life. I don't know. I don't even know who he is. I, I like him as a person. Do I think that he's a great mixed martial artist? No, he's not a great mixed martial artist. Did he deserve to be in the UFC? That's arguable, and you could say yes because it got eyeballs, and that's yeah. what this whole damn thing is about. It's, it's an not entertainment about, business. It's an entertainment business, yeah. man. You're right, and when I look at it, look at it, they're all peacocks. All of them are peacocks with these lovely, beautiful plumes and feathers. You know, some of them might be going out there and put on these fantastic performances, and, and I would say, man, that peacock went out there and put on a great showing. But then you have some that just – when you look at that peacock, you're like, wow, that's just – it's just beautiful. And when you're able to put both of them together, it's wonderful. But I can't – That's right. It's magic, right? When you <laughs> when you get a, a Conor McGregor, when you, uh, yes. who is a great fighter and an amazing peacock, when you get a Chael Sonnen who, granted, had ups and downs but did reach the peak. You know what I mean? But yeah. did reach but the peak. But when it came to one si one aspect, his 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 – Shit talking was at a on whole another level. another level. On another like, level, like just just fantasy level, like just just levels above. So I mean, I get what Curtis is saying. 
this is just one of those arguments because I mean I love the idea of I mean I love uh, watching women's fights. I love Invicta. I love I've followed that shit for for years and I and I dig it. But I'm also one that's like uh, you know I while I think there is issues that need to be taken care of when it comes to pay for fights and other other sort of stuff that we see in everyday life. I I'm not so put back when I understand when somebody's able to market themselves as being an attractive individual as well as a top notch individual. I'm not going to hold that against them. It's to me, dude. Look, KSI Logan Paul. It's the same argument, but yeah. in a but in a different two good looking right? dudes that were just okay, social media. I just said in a different angle, you jackass. Yeah. All right, look, I'm not saying. <laughs> I mean, look, not that they're bad looking dudes or whatever, but yeah, no, that's they're it. both fine but for that's whatever. What I'm <laughs> they're <laughs> g- they're gamers, right? Yeah. They marketed to us. I mean, or they marketed to a certain audience. Or whatever. I mean, they're gamers. They're just social media presences. Oh, oh, that's right. KSI was the gamer. Logan Paul is just more. Is as that a, what it uh, is? Yeah, KSI was a gamer. Logan Paul was just a social, social media, media dude. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. everybody brings in their aspects, so. It's not fair to be like, okay, look, uh, KSI can bring in the gaming audience. Uh, Logan Paul can bring in the social media audience. Right. Uh, uh, CM Punk can bring in the pro wrestling audience. Right. But then this girl can't bring in the audience that just thinks she's sexy. Right. Like, no. I mean, you're right. At the end of the day, you still got to win some fights or you're not going to yeah. stick around. I mean, but if whatever you're... it is that brings you that audience, that I don't think you can hate them. You know what yeah. I mean? So, like – I, I understand what Curtis was trying to say, and I, and I think what he's saying is fair. Like in the long run, like look, everybody's going to get a look. Everybody's gonna, if you can bring eyeballs, you can get a look. Yeah. That doesn't mean that you deserve to stay around. If you go zero and five, and they're like, oh, and now he gets a title fight, or now she gets that a title would be fight. Ridiculous. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Of course, that's stupid. Yeah. But so yes, if it stays like that, then yes, you need to bitch about it. But in the in the meantime, so I understand where he's coming from. But at the yeah. same time. Like, if Pro Gonzalez wants to accentuate her sexuality or wants to accentuate whatever, like, I mean, she's still got to go in and fight at the yeah. end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, I just, to me, she's I She's still doing what others would never want to be able to do. That's it. I mean, she will always win my <clears throat> yeah, fight tough. to yeah. watch. You know, I, exactly. yeah, I'm a big fan of Pearl Gonzalez. Uh it's it's one of those things I can see I can I can sense his frustration, but when you realize that this is still an entertainment business, if you're going to be upset that somebody's coming in and they're able to uh, be an attractive fighter and get fights and get whatever, why are you not upset that number one is not fighting number two? Right. Why are you not upset that number three is not fighting Fair number point. four? You look at number three fighting number eight because number eight talks a great shit game. Why are you not completely irate That's at that situation? Point. That's a fair point. You know, people are just doing – they're using what they have to get the fights. I get it. I get it, you know, but who cares? It, when it all boils down to it, this still right now is still an entertainment business. If it changes to where one fights number two – three fights number four and that sort of thing and you're able to take that other sort of stuff out of the equation then we can bitch and moan and say why is this attractive fighter sticking around longer than maybe an unattractive fighter that that's on a three fight losing streak yep. i get it i get the frustration but as a fan of most of these people that you're <laughs> referencing, I'm glad that they're around. And, and, and shame on you for even letting some fan drop Pearl Gonzalez. <laughs> but that, to me, that goes back to the human aspect, too, is that, like, yeah. listen, man, every one of these fighters should should uh, approach their business, you know, their career in the natural and way. Like, don't, own, feel, don't, and, don't feel like, you know, don't feel that you have to uh, mimic somebody else. Yeah. Because like every way is going to be different and unique. Like, nobody's going to go. You can try to go out there and be Connor, and you're not going to be Connor. That's it. You want to try to go out there and be Yuana, you're not going to be Yuana. You want to try to go out there and be Ronda. Many have tried, but nobody has been you, uh, Ronda after Ronda. That's I it. mean, it's going to happen, but uh, I get his frustration. And that's why I say it's a, it's a no win. Uh, a no win argument because I completely agree with aspects of of what his argument hard, is dude, about. For Kurt, Curtis, Curtis is a, is a legit badass. Um, dude, I remember, he's a great fighter, man. He's a great and fighter, I get it. And, 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 and he's uh, been overstepped because of shit talkers at times right. and other people that are the it moment. 
And when I can see where somebody's like, well, what else can I possibly do? I don't want to go out there and talk crap. I don't want to out there and I don't want to have to be a social promotion team when I'm focusing 24-7 on fine-tuning this athlete. But there you go. Just do that. Like, don't – like, yeah. that's – it. because, man, I, I love Curtis, man. He's such a good dude, man. And I remember, like, the first time I talked to him I, – I remember this. I'll never forget. I would never met him before. And the first time I interviewed him – um, I realized he had a speech impediment, and yeah. I actually wanted. I actually asked the UFC PR staff, "I'm like, do you know anything about his his speech impediment?" And I've, I've, I, maybe I've missed it. I'm sure he's probably done some interviews about this along the way. But I always thought, like, what a compelling story. You know what I mean? Did he become a fighter because he got sick of being picked on because of his speech impediment? You know what I mean? And right. and obviously in this back and forth with with Pearl, he brought up his speech impediment, and it was funny. Like even the UFC staff that asked, they're like, "Oh, we we don't know. I'm not sure." And I'm like, "All right, well, if you could find out, like, if he's because I didn't want to make." him uncomfortable talking about it in a group situation or whatever. But I thought, what a good story, man. If this dude grew up and he was bullied because he had the speech impediment and that's what made him become who he is, you know what I mean? Like, right. what, a, what an amazing story that would be. Right. But again, that's his story. And it's different than, than a different story. And, 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 and yes, it may be frustrating to see the show pony, the peacock, the whatever, yeah. get the bigger headlines. But you know what, man? Don't try to be that guy. Don't try to be that girl. Just keep doing who you are, yeah. and then when you get to the top, your story will be your story. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, and I know that's got to be hard. Like, trust me, man. Trust me. I can, I can, I can attest to what it feels like to see other people get get beautiful spotlights and beautiful headlines. Yeah. And when you're like, dude, I've been grinding behind the scenes, and sometimes it's frustrating. But your path is your path. You know what I mean? And, right. and, and don't don't change your path, man. Just stay on it. Yep. So. And I think it's just a moment of frustration. And it's probably one of those things like, uh, could it have maybe been dealt with better? Because it's one of those things that once it's out there, now you have to deal with it. And, and I just, I just, if people think Steve is ducking DC, trust me, Blades is going to get hate on this for a long time. Yeah. God, people are ridiculous. Uh. People hate on the most ridiculous stuff. But yeah, this is one of those arguments that, yeah, I mean, you're never going to win because. Well, one for me personally, I I I, I love. I, th I mean, I, there's attractive dudes that are fighting the sport. I mean, that's why women watch the sport. That's true. There's attractive women watching the sport and that uh, or participating in the sport, and that's why dudes watch the sport. It's a necessary evil in the sense, you know. I mean, like, if I'm going to watch a sport for eight hours, watching the prelims and everything else, it doesn't hurt that there's a bunch of fit, attractive people doing it. But I get his frustration. But you're never going to win this argument. Ah. It, it's it's one of those arguments that. It's best to be frustrated and have a couple beers with your buddies and talk about it, but to throw it out there in the public, it's a no-win situation. I, that's 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 where I come to. Is like I love Curtis, man. I just wish he would. Curtis, is, yeah, Curtis he, is a good. He's a dude. great dude, man. He's a good dude. He's not gonna win this argument. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, last thing, real quick, uh, because we've been talking way too long. But yeah, shout out to Latchkey Brewing for making that happen. Uh, <laughs> it's your fault, ten percent. It is. I just want to give a shout out to uh, K Fury Fighting Championship, man. Uh, I, listen, I was supposed to work an event that got canceled, um, and uh, I, those 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 cats at that company are cool, man. They've been, they've been incredibly informative throughout the process, and uh, it sounds like some big things are happening this year. In fact, well, I, can't, I don't even know if I can say it, but I think I think uh, I think I don't know. I, I just think some big things are going to happen. I think I think I maybe I think maybe it, 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 the, it, I mean th this isn't even vague, so I'll just pretend like it's vague. We might do a CFFC event in Vegas. Really? I know, I know. That's shocking. Where would it happen? I don't know. Who could? Have, there's so many venues here that are just accepting uh, things. Well, all the I time. would rather a lingerie fighting championship <laughs> take place in <laughs> Vegas sooner rather than shout better. out the lingerie fighting championship as well because they they are. They I'm a shareholder the, in that they fine do have company. The I would like to see them team in the business <laughs> and uh, and you as a large shareholder. Yes, you maybe know, the last doing. event we had was the earthquake event. Oh, was that the last one, dude? That was weird. The first time I've ever really felt that physical yeah. earthquake. Let alone to be like in a working environment and then to try to like keep working through the earth shaking but around we did, you. Because that's but the we kind did. of professionals we are. Yeah, we had. Do we have beers under the table? Of course we did. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only broadcast gig. Well, other than this one, where they we have, we're, yeah. we're allowed to. <laughs> Besides this one. Yeah. Uh, anyway. All right. Listen, we've been rambling on too long, but it feels good. Dude, we're almost back next week. USC 249 after too long away. We're going to be back. Uh, appreciate every single person that dealt with us in the interim. Hopefully, 
we didn't bore you too much while we didn't we really probably real did. fights. I feel like we didn't really even talk. So let me just, before we end, because I feel like we're getting there. Besides 249, besides, of course, that main event, besides Henry Cejudo and Dominic, Dominic Cruz, besides Ngannou and Rosa Trek, which is awesome, what other fight are you most imp- looking forward to? Because this Calvin Qatar, Jeremy Stevens, awesome. Jorgen DeCastro, Greg Hardy, awesome. Donald Cerrone and Anthony Bettis as the featured That's bout insane. on the prelim. That is just That's redonk. Insane. That is that is on a prelim. But when you look down the line, this is an absolutely fantastic. All right, so, so all right, if so you had to pick, all right, look, dude, it's hard. It, I'm not gonna lie. This is ridiculous. This card is ridiculous. It's uh, redonk. All right, let me just say, uh, Bryce Mitchell versus Charles Rosa is insane. That fight is nuts. Vicente Luque versus Nico Price. So just stylistically off the bat. That's and sick. No disrespect. That's to, the third card of the fight. Saying, no disrespect to <laughs> Alvy and Span kicking it off. But Which is crazy. Sam Alvy and Span starting. That is right, that's so, redonk. So, so Alvy and Span, somebody's going to get knocked out. Like they're going to stand and bang and somebody's going to get knocked out. Right? You, like just, the, you just jinxed it. Okay, that's going to be boring. That's going to be <laughs> that's gonna be Derek Lewis, Francis Nagani, right? All right. Uh, but I, see, Mit- Mitchell and Rosa, like I think they're gonna have some like ridiculous grappling changes. Luke and, and Luke and, and Price. That's gonna be sick. It's just gonna please, be- please be what we all know that exactly. that fight could be. I was asking the Junkie Radio guys the other day, and they both uh, here's the ones they came up with: Goes and George. And I, and I apologize, I can't remember which two. I think I think George said Uriah Hall and Jacare, and Goes said Carlos Sparza and Michelle Watterson. And they both kind of gave similar arguments, which are crazy. So if you look at those two fights, which sound different, you know, um, obviously, you know, different sexes, different divisions, that sort of thing. But both of them, stylistically, they're different fights, right? Like you're, yeah. you're talking about like an interesting, an interesting matchup in styles, but also kind of a crossroads fights for all people so involved. So grappler striker. Yeah, exactly. You know, kind of a grappler striker, but also in both matchups, you know, guys that or girls that are, you know are kind of at crossroads in their careers, you know, like where do they go from here? You know, they're at big moments. They've been around yeah. forever. So I love that. Obviously, Alexi Olenek and Fabrizio Verdum, like two heavyweight legit grapplers, like yeah. uh, which probably means they're going to stand and bang with each other. But if they go to the ground, that should be a lot of fun. And then you said Cowboy Pettis. That's and, just so And ridiculous. then you get to the main card, Jorgen DeCastro, Greg Hardy. Um, obviously, Jorgen DeCastro, Greg Hardy, two heavy, I mean, just heavy, heavy hitters. Um, Greg Hardy, by the way, an asthmatic. Uh, during this, you know, time of this, oh, this, yeah. uh, you know, infection of respiratory system, right? I, interesting, interesting. I mean, because uh, they're they're saying that people that are 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 more possible to be affected are people that are dealing with issues. That's it. This, so, is, this is a class candidate. So, I don't know, man. So I want to talk to them about that uh, when we get down there, and then uh, and then, like you said, then it goes Cavacator, Jeremy Stevens, which is just an insane fight. And then you get to the big three, the featured three, the guy in a rose truck, which was supposed this to be a main event. Sick. Oh, dude, it's just it's insane. It's, it's it's so it's crazy because one, you could have put a bunch of just regular random fight night card mm-hmm. that they would throw wherever, and I think everybody would be absolutely jumping through hoops to watch it. But when you look at this card, I mean like find me a find me a, a a boring fight. Find me a bad fight. There's not one fight on here that you don't care about or you don't have any that you don't have some stake in it. You know what I mean? Even Absolutely. even you look at Span and uh, Nalvi, which is starting, so most people that they could look at it and just say, Oh, you know, it's the first fight of the night. This is probably whatever, but it's smiling Sam Alvi who always goes out there. He's always smiling. I love watching him go out there and Span who is an absolute beast. I mean, this card is destined to start. I mean, if it goes how it should, please, thank you, please, 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 yeah. please, MMA gods. This is going to be top notch action straight from the get go. Well, and here's I what mean, I'm saying too. Like, I mean, look, we we've been very open about um, the financial implications of everything that's happening, right? Like, yeah. I totally understand if you don't have the 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 sixty bucks or whatever it is to to, to buy a pay per view. Like, I totally get it, man. If yeah. you can't buy the, ma- the you know the main card. Totally get it, man. Like like we said. You'll enjoy it, watching the premium. If card. you don't have the three dollars to support us on Patreon, I get it. Yeah. So I totally understand people that can't buy the main card. Drop it four ninety nine for the ESPN plus. Bro, or if, it's, if, it's, no, it's on it's on ESPN. So think about that. Oh, it's on ESPN so, and ESPN that's Plus. That's right. So if you have cable But if you, you don't have cable. You can watch the, if you don't know cable, you know. Fine. Some of us got rid of ESPN. I have Sling, but if you don't have ESPN. I mean, I, I get it. If you don't have If you that, don't have ESPN or I'll, I'll regular tell you cable, what, if get that ESPN+. If, Plus. if you can't afford ESPN right now, I'll give you my login. to. The, no. <laughs> Do not say that. <laughs> Scratch that. That Scratch is the that. latch key talking. That is the latch key talking. Pay the four ninety nine and get the ESPN+, Plus and watch the account. But that's pretty cool that they're actually uh, – 
simultaneously. That's that's, that's a then, sign of the times, that's right a sign there. Of times. And then uh, the next two events are are going to be uh, simulcast on ESPN and ESPN Plus. So you're yeah. so out of these three cards, that is the world we live in. Cards, never would you see fights. ESPN. Never would you ever see ESPN playing the same thing that they're going to be putting on. Wow. The ESPN Plus. Like, that is just crazy. But you're right. So out of all these fights, you're only going to miss possibly five fights. If you can't afford it, if you which, don't is totally do the which is totally understandable. Which is totally – if you're hurting right now, don't – and, of course, we'll have full coverage of MMA Junkie. And then, of course, the MMA Roadshow. We'll talk about it. And – and a half. And you know what? Give, 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 give that another try. And a half. That was better. Better, stronger. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to be – because I was saying – you know, I you know, I, it's just I'm I'm excited to bring it back, I'm dude. To get that. It's it's good. It's been I too mean, long. this is a, what a, and I feel like we say it all the time when we we don't have a good a good fight card. We come back and say this is a strong card, but folks, maybe I am more sentimental of the fact that fights are coming back. Maybe it's the ten percent alcohol. It's definitely ten percent. But when you look at this card, this is a good card, even outside of the fact of. Uh, Literally, you could take the bantamweight title, you could take the interim title off the table. And me personally, I just look at the name of the fighters and I look at the fighters, and this is worthwhile to me. It's crazy because you're right. If this was headlined, if this was UFC on ESPN Plus, whatever, Nagano versus Rosenstroke, and then everything below it was the main, like the card. You'd still be hyped about it. I'd still be hyped about, still it. Be hyped about it. And then we still got two titles. All right, listen, we're gonna Unreal. talk about it next week. Cold coffee's not getting caught. Talk about it. Well, maybe I mean I, maybe I could call you or something, or we'll figure. Where out am something. I gonna be? I don't know. Where it's hard to track be? you down. I know. I have such a busy, crazy. You might be in the middle of moving life. two lights from one side. from one side back to the <laughs> other side. <laughs> I need a whole nother week of furlough to move the lights back to the other side of the room. I don't know what next week is going to look like. I, I don't know what media are even going to be there, so I don't know who we're going to talk to. It'll be after the virtual media day. I don't know what's going to happen, but I will say there will be an and a half because we're going <clears> to <throat> have fights. So jump on that Patreon. And for everybody else, man, let me just say, we will have a show. It will be wild, I'm sure. <laughs> and thanks for listening.